Welcome to the Fantasy Audiobook. Unlimited Rewards in Marvel, and My Girlfriend is Wonder Woman. Chapter 21. Me, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Perkins was stunned. She did not expect that Russell would actually suspect that she was a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. For a killer, this is a very serious suspicion. Or even a potentially life-threatening suspicion. Any killer has a natural vigilance against the agents of official agencies. Whether this agent is an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., or an agent of the FBI, CIA, MI6, or even an agent of the disbanded former Soviet intelligence agency KGB, they will be vigilant. More importantly, the killers are not the police, they don't need so-called evidence. As long as they doubt you, they may kill you. As for whether there will be a manslaughter, this is not within the scope of the killer's consideration. Russell didn't speak, and looked at Perkins calmly. Whether Perkins is an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., he is not sure, he just has such a suspicion. After all, in his memory, there was a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent who looked exactly like Perkins. Why do you think I'm an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Perkins changed back to the iceberg beauty again and asked with a frown. Intuition, intuition. After hearing Russell's answer, Perkins almost couldn't help drawing a gun and hitting him directly. Just because of intuition, you suspect that I am an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Do you know how much trouble this suspicion will bring me? Perkins is really unhappy now. With Russell's current reputation, if other people know that he suspects Perkins is an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., other fellow killers will most likely directly regard her as an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. At that time, those colleagues who have had a holiday with her at some point will regard her as an assassination target at some point. Of course I know, so I've never said that to anyone else. Russell poured himself another glass of whiskey and took a sip. After seeing Russell's calm expression without any change, Perkins could not wait to bite him now. I'm not an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Before getting up and leaving, Perkins said very seriously. After speaking, she left the bar. After Perkins left, Russell patiently waited for the hotel's information. Until the Punisher is dealt with, he will not have any plans to return to work in the office. This time, we waited until noon. Hotel restaurant. Russell was enjoying his lunch alone in the dining room. At this moment, Karen in a neat suit came to him. Mr. Bradley, this is the information you want. Karen handed Russell the paper in his hand. Thanks. Do you have any other needs, sir? Karen continued. The information has already arrived. According to Russell's previous style, he would immediately set out to deal with the Punisher. Since we are going to set out to kill people, we will naturally have to have weapons and equipment. As the sommelier in the hotel now, he won't be here. Karen replied with a smile. The sommelier is the hotel's gun supplier. As for why people who provide firearms are called sommeliers, it should be that both alcohol and bullets have the effect of making people lie down. Putting down the knife and fork in his hand, Russell went to the wine tasting room of the hotel alone. In the tasting room, he saw the sommelier who he had seen many times. Good noon, Mr. Bradley. Like Karen, the sommelier also wore a sharp black suit. The only difference is that the sommelier is not black, but white. I want to taste it. Unlike a normal tasting room, the wine cabinet here is not filled with wine, but with various guns. Pistols, rifles, sniper rifles, shotguns, daggers, grenades. Fully automatic, semi-automatic, special modification. All weapons are arranged in different categories. I know you used to like German breeds, but I highly recommend the new Austrian breeds, the Glock 26 and Glock 34. You tasted Glock 26 last time, what do you think? The sommelier took out two pistols from the cabinet with the pistols and placed them in front of Russell. It feels good, Russell replied. Then you should like the new breed this time. Remodeled handle, flared magazine well for easier reloading, and you'll love its custom modifications. The sommelier introduced the new and improved varieties, while Russell picked up the Glock 26 and 34 on the table and actually felt it. From the appearance, the Glock 26 and 34 that the sommelier brought out this time did not have any obvious changes. But once you get started, you can see the difference. I have to say that the modified one is a little more comfortable than the original one. After some hands-on experience, Russell put down the two pistols and continued, is there a more accurate and stronger one? Powerful, accurate. After thinking for a while, the sommelier took out an automatic rifle from the cabinet where the rifles were placed. AR-15, 
11.5 inch barrel, ion coated bolt, with Chicon 1 to 6x zoom scope. Like the Glock 26 and 34 just now, this AR 15 is obviously a special modification. Okay, I want these. Two pistols, one automatic rifle. These firepower does not look very powerful, but for Russell, it is completely enough. These three guns are all prepared for the use of the spear throwing technique. If it is just to kill the Punisher, he can use the ability of the Venom Symbiote. After getting the shotgun, he hasn't actually used it in combat. This time he plans to practice with the Punisher. The Queen, downstairs in an abandoned building. After buying a gun from a sommelier, Russell arrived in his Porsche 911. According to the investigation of the hotel intelligence personnel, the Punisher is now in this abandoned building. In order to obtain this information, two intelligence personnel sacrifice their lives. This is also the main reason why the expedited fee is four gold coins. Sitting in the car, he looked at the building that had been abandoned for some time. Russell got out of the car with the pistol and rifle he had just bought. His action plan this time is very simple, that is to kill directly. However, as soon as he got out of the car, he realized that something was wrong. Someone is watching him. Although Russell does not have superpowers such as telepathy, he has been a killer for more than two years. When driving here, he didn't find anyone following him. But when he got out of the car, the feeling of being watched became extremely obvious. The symbiote in his body reminded him like a gong in his ear. Policeman, er shield, Russell turned to look at the corner of the street behind him, looking at the car parked on the side of the road. Do not care, even the police and people from S.H.I.E.L.D. don't matter. Russell ignored the unidentified watchers and walked into the abandoned building with a bag with rifles in it. This abandoned building has more than 20 floors, and the Punisher's safe house is on the 15th floor. Because of the abandonment, the elevator in the building has long stopped running. After entering the building, Russell took the rifle out of the bag and opened the safety. On the 15th floor, there is no elevator. You really can pick a place. The elevator can't be used, so the only way is to take the safe passage. Russell came to the safe passage next to the elevator, pushed open the fire door and glanced. On the surface, there is nothing wrong with the safe passage. Except that no one has cleaned it for a long time. But Russell saw a gadget in a corner of the safe passage. A gadget that obviously shouldn't be in this place. So cautious as expected of a man who can make the hotel issue four gold coins for expedited fees. The gadget installed in the corner of the stairs is nothing but a mini-surveillance camera, and it's the wireless kind. Although the performance of this mini-surveillance camera is not as good as that of a conventional camera, the advantage is that it is mini enough to be easily overlooked. After discovering the mini-camera installed in the stairs of the safe passage, Russell was basically certain that the Punisher was now in the safe house. This wirelessly connected mini surveillance camera doesn't last long and is only installed when needed. If the Punisher isn't in the safe house right now, he doesn't need to install it. After closing the fire door, he took a look at several other safe passages. There is no suspense, all the safe passages are installed with this kind of mini camera. Now that all safe passages have cameras, the next thing is simple. Russell took a deep breath and entered the venom form directly. In the next second, he, like a black monster, rushed into the safe passage without any hesitation. Isn't it the 15th floor? No problem. Russell's extraordinary physique was further strengthened by the symbiote, and the whole person rushed up the stairs like a shadow. To run to the 15th floor, for ordinary people, it may take a little time to waste. But for Russell, it wasn't a problem at all. Like a black monster, he just rushed out of the safe passage when a grenade and a flash bomb landed in front of him. Boom, boom, the grenades and flashbangs exploded one after another. The flash bomb exploded a little earlier than the grenade, and the dazzling light and loud noise made Russell's footsteps pause. The dazzling light did no harm to Russell in venom form. But the loud noise caused him some small troubles. One of the symbiote's weaknesses happens to be sound waves. Although the noise hertz of the flash bomb is not between 4000 and 6000 hertz, which is the most unbearable for the symbiote, it still caused some stress to the symbiote on him. To be precise, a part of the symbiont in the body produced a stress response. Dozens of black tentacles emerged uncontrollably, as if to leave his body. However, 
this stress response only lasted for less than a second before it completely disappeared. But at this time, the shock wave and flames generated by the grenade explosion also came. Compared with the flashbang, the effect of the grenade explosion is smaller. For ordinary people, a shock wave that is deadly enough, for Russell now, is almost like a breeze blowing in the face. Although the flame is also the weakness of the symbiote. However, the duration of the flames produced by the explosion of the grenade was too short, so short that there were no scars left. Although Punisher does not know the weakness of the symbiote, he has to say that he is lucky. Flashbangs and grenades accidentally hit two of the symbiote's weaknesses. If you let him come a few more times, he should be able to find these two weaknesses. But unfortunately, his luck ended here. The second after the flashbang and the grenade exploded, Russell, who looked like a black monster, came to the Punisher and swung his claws like a demon toward him. Punisher is worthy of being a man who was rated as a level 10 agent by Majafakman. At this critical moment, he put the rifle in his hand across his chest and used the rifle as a shield. Bang! The claws in venom form are indeed sharp, but they are not enough to cut metal easily. Russell's right paw slid across the rifle in Punisher's hand, and the huge force directly smashed the rifle. The huge force was transmitted to the Punisher along the rifle, causing him to fly upside down. Before the man had landed, the Punisher pulled out his pistol and shot wildly at Russell. Bang 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 bang, the bullet hit Russell without any suspense. Then, it was bounced off. The Punisher who witnessed this scene showed a very solemn expression. After finding that the bullet could not hurt Russell, the Punisher decisively gave up shooting. After landing, he didn't hesitate, he rolled, threw away the pistol, and took out two grenades again. Pulling out the pull ring, he threw his hands at Russell one after the other. At Russell's current speed, dodging the grenade thrown by the Punisher is not a problem at all. But he didn't do it. At the moment the Punisher threw the grenade, he controlled the black tentacles to take out the pistol on his body. In venom form, he is inconvenient to use firearms, but that doesn't mean he can't shoot. The black tentacles at this time were just like his hands. Although from the outside, these black tentacles don't look like human hands at all, but it doesn't matter. Boom, boom, at the moment the Punisher threw a grenade at him, Russell controlled the black tentacles to shoot. Spear throwing, the bullet drew an arc in the air and hit the grenade in the air with precision. Boom, boom. The hit grenade exploded without any suspense. In fact, even if he didn't need to throw his spear, Russell could still hit the two grenades in the air. But the bullet that goes straight is too uninnovative. In the sound of the explosion, Russell manipulated two more black tentacles and took out another pistol and rifle. A symbiote that can only melee and use cold weapons is not an excellent symbiote. The biggest difference between humans and animals is that humans use tools. The venom that Russell has now is not venom in the real sense, and he has not considered developing it in the normal way of venom. Obviously, it can be transformed into various forms, so why should you impose limitations on yourself? Isn't it good to carry weapons such as Gatling and individual rocket launchers as a firepower fort? A normal human can only use two guns at the same time. As for the symbiote, as long as the control force can keep up, it is not a problem to use 200 guns at the same time. Time has changed, and thinking must follow the times. After seeing the monster like Russell display the Brotherhood's signature gun throw, the Punisher's already ugly face became even more ugly. He just fought the cross yesterday, and he would never admit that he was wrong with the unreasonable shooting technique of throwing a spear. It was enough to surprise him that Russell could throw a gun. After seeing Russell controlling the black tentacles to take out a pistol and a rifle from his body again, he knew that today was no ordinary trouble. The Punisher knew that Russell would come to him, but he did not expect that Russell would appear in front of him in such a monster-like form. When the intelligence officers of the Continental Hotel followed him, he knew that Russell would definitely come to him. Not to mention, Russell has always had a good reputation in the underground world of debt repayment. In order to deal with Russell, the Punisher did a lot of homework. However, he never imagined that Russell was still hiding the two unknown abilities of spear-throwing and monster form. In fact, this does not mean that his preparatory work in the early stage was not done well. Russell himself did not expect that he would be able to obtain the spear-throwing technique so smoothly. 
After manipulating the black tentacles to take out all the guns on his body, he did not immediately attack the Punisher, but stood there and hooked his fingers. The Punisher is bound to die, but before killing him, Russell intends to use him to test his spear-throwing skills. It is not a good habit to tease the enemy in battle. Whether in movies, TV shows, or anime, there are plots where the villain teases the protagonist. These villains who could have won, were finally killed by the protagonist with a halo because of their arrogance and arrogance, and they became the backdrop for the protagonist. If it was in a normal battle, of course Russell would not do such a thing. But now, he doesn't mind giving the Punisher a small chance to resist. After seeing Russell's actions, the Punisher's face flashed an imperceptible joy. Very good. The other party started to be arrogant. Although the situation at the scene was still not much better, Russell's arrogance allowed the Punisher to see some opportunities. I saw him slowly stand up, pick up the pistol he just threw away, and take out the last flash bomb on his body. Boom, boom, boom. As soon as he took out the flashbang in his left hand, Punisher fired three shots at Russell. Russell also fired at the same moment he fired. Under the control of the Black Tentacles, Glock 26, Glock 34, and AR-15 fired at the same time. Shooting, controlling three guns at the same time to cast the spear technique, and one of them is an automatic rifle, is also a brand new experience for Russell. Although he didn't use his own hands to cast the spear, the Black Tentacles did not live up to his expectations. The Brotherhood's signature skill, the spear-throwing technique, was successfully used by him. The arc-flying bullet collided with the one shot by the Punisher, and bounced off each other with a clang. The Punisher didn't expect to shoot Russell. After discovering that Russell mastered throwing the gun, he knew that it would be difficult for him to take advantage of the shooting process. But even so, he still did not give up and continued to shoot. Bang 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 bang. He pulled the trigger frantically, and in just a few seconds, he shot out all the bullets in the magazine. At this time, Russell was still standing there, and the black tentacles controlled the pistol and rifle to keep firing. It is indeed a little more difficult to control three guns at the same time to perform the spear-throwing technique. But for him now, it's not a big problem. The symbiote has strengthened not only his physical quality, but also his abilities such as nerve reaction speed and movement precision have also been qualitatively improved. If these abilities hadn't been improved, he wouldn't be able to control the symbiote with his own abilities. You must know that normal symbiotes have their own consciousness and soul. The reward of Venom symbiote, on the surface, seems to give him all the abilities behind Venom's possession. But in fact, this reward turned him into a symbiote to a certain extent. To put it simply, he is Venom, and Venom is him. In terms of life form, he is still human now. But he is a human with a symbiotic fusion. He is not much different from other symbiotes except that he cannot possess others like a real symbiote, and he can survive without a host. Click. There was the sound of the magazine being emptied from the Punisher. However, at this moment, the Punisher threw the flash bomb in his hand. Boom. Like the bullets that came, the flash bomb thrown by the Punisher was precisely hit by Russell. Dazzling bright light and loud noise are born at the same time. The loud noise of the flash bomb once again caused the symbiote on Russell to produce some small stress responses. Dozens of black tentacles appeared uncontrollably, showing the appearance of detaching from his body. Just like before, this stress response only lasted for less than a second and then completely disappeared. If the Punisher was wearing protective goggles now, he might be able to see the stress reaction on Russell. But unfortunately, he doesn't see it now. The moment he threw the flashbang, he turned around and ran without any hesitation. He did this, on the one hand, to avoid the glare of the flash bomb from affecting him. On the other hand, it is to get back to the safe house as soon as possible. He now has only a dagger left on him. If he can't go back to the safe house to get other weapons, no matter how arrogant Russell is now, he can't be Russell's opponent. He just experienced firsthand how terrifying the power of Russell in the form of Venom. With just a wave of his hand, he flew upside down more than 10 meters without the ability to resist. This level of physical strength is definitely not something he can compete with. The Punisher's speed was very fast. In just three or four seconds, he arrived at the door of the safe house. 
Boom. Just as he was about to enter the safe house, he suddenly fell forward uncontrollably, and his right leg was directly pierced by a bullet. Ignoring the severe pain from his right leg, the Punisher used his inertia to roll forward and rolled directly into the safe room. What the Punisher is going to do in the safe house is a question that can be answered with a toe. But Russell still had no plans to kill him immediately. Otherwise, what he just aimed at was not the Punisher's right leg, but the brain and heart. When the figure of the Punisher disappeared in front of him, Russell took the black tentacles and controlled the pistol and rifle back into his body. Then, he came to the room next to the Punisher's safe house. After entering the safe house, the Punisher dragged his injured right leg and took out the most powerful weapon in the safe house. Gatling gun. This was originally the weapon he prepared to exterminate the gang. Unexpectedly, it will be used against Russell now. When he endured the pain, he quickly set up the Gatling gun and aimed at the door of the safe house. Accident, it happened. Bang. Only a loud bang was heard, and the wall next to him shattered. A black figure, like a tank, smashed through the wall incomparably domineering and slammed into him fiercely. The sudden accident even made it too late for him to turn the muzzle of the Gatling gun. Before he could do anything, the Punisher was stepped on by Russell's chest, making a close contact with the ground, and uncontrollably spewing a mouthful of blood. Russell controlled the strength of his right foot so as not to accidentally trample the Punisher to death. If he wanted to kill the Punisher immediately, when he rushed out of the safe passage just now, he could kill the Punisher in one go, instead of teasing him like a villain. Stop struggling, you won't have a chance. Russell controlled the symbiote, showing half of his face, and said slowly to the Punisher under his feet. Although there is no chance to leave alive, the Punisher still has no intention of accepting his fate. He pulled out the only weapon on his body, holding a dagger in his right hand, and stabbed Russell's right foot fiercely. However, as soon as he raised his hand, several black tentacles rushed out from Russell's right foot, directly binding his right hand. Click. The black tentacles wrapped around Punisher's right hand like a python exerted a little force, and the crisp sound of bones breaking rang out. The arm was broken alive, and a huge pain instantly flowed through the body. Even so, the Punisher still clenched his teeth and did not let out a wailing sound like begging for mercy. Don't worry, your pain will be over soon. Russell ignored Punisher's murderous gaze, and a few black tentacles sprouted from his body, and began to possess Punisher. Unlike Sloane, Punisher does not have any supernatural abilities. He is good at various special combat tactics such as individual soldiers and teams, and is proficient in various firearms. He also masters various skills such as fighting, shooting, underwater operations, extorting confessions, and intelligence collection. From an anti-hero perspective, the Punisher is not particularly strong. But from a warrior's point of view, he is an all-around hexagonal soldier. If he had the opportunity to inject the super soldier serum that Captain America used, he would be equivalent to the dark version of Captain America. Although the symbiote cannot completely replicate the abilities of the Punisher, especially the knowledge in his mind. But it doesn't matter. All Russell wanted now was the combat skills the Punisher had trained strictly in the Marine Corps. Human memory can be divided into two types. One is declarative memory, such as factual information such as names, times, events, words, etc. The declarative memory cannot be replicated by the symbiote, nor can it be replicated no matter how long it is possessed. Because this memory has nothing to do with physical skills, it is just pure information. But the second type of memory, procedural memory, is different. Although procedural memory also exists in the brain, procedural memory is directly reflected in the body's instinctive response. For example, brushing your teeth, washing your face, driving a car, using a computer, shooting a gun, fighting, etc. There are many procedural memories in the Punisher's brain, and what Russell needs are those related to combat. As for the rest, he doesn't need it. He could replicate the spear-throwing technique from Sloane, because he copied the part of the body's instinctive response to the spear-throwing technique in Sloane's procedural memory. The Punisher didn't know what Russell was going to do to him, but he instinctively felt that it wouldn't be a good thing. However, right now, he has no right to resist. The black tentacle-like symbiote quickly attached itself to Punisher and merged with his body. With the possession of the symbiote, his injuries were quickly repaired at a speed visible to the naked eye. 
the right arm that was broken by the black tentacles, the right leg that was penetrated by the bullet, the rib that was broken in the chest, all his injuries were recovered in just one or two seconds. Not only that, but he also felt a powerful physical strength that he had never felt before. The sudden surge of physical strength made him experience an indescribable pleasure. When Sloane felt this pleasant feeling, he was intoxicated for more than 10 seconds before he regained his senses. The Punisher is far better than Sloane. After only two or three seconds, he recovered from that extremely pleasant feeling. As soon as he regained his senses, he tried to rebel against Russell. Result, he couldn't even move a finger. The symbiotes attached to him seemed to have merged with him, but these symbiotes have never escaped Russell's control. Don't even move a finger, if Russell doesn't agree, he can't even breathe. It only took about two or three minutes for Russell to copy the desired combat ability. Although there is no interrogation, tracking, intelligence analysis, tactical formulation and other capabilities, it is completely sufficient for Russell. After copying the desired combat ability, Russell looked down at the Punisher. Farewell, Mr. Custer. Custer was the Punisher's surname, and his full name was Frank Custer. I will wait for you in hell. The Punisher spoke the last words of his life. When he finished speaking, Russell manipulated the symbiote in his body, made his heart stop beating, and gave him a decent death with cardiac paralysis. Evil ability, cruel style. I really look like a villain. Russell slandered in his heart. Glancing at the Punisher who had already reported to Mephisto, Russell released his venom form and checked the safe house. After destroying all the evidence that might point to him, such as the footage captured by the mini-surveillance camera, he leisurely left the safe house. He originally wanted to call the corpse collector to deal with the Punisher's corpse, but after thinking about it, he didn't do it in the end. The already dead Punisher is not worth a coin to waste. Even if Punisher's body was pulled back by the New York police for dissection, it would only be found that Punisher's cause of death was cardiac palsy. If that's the case, then there's no need to deal with the Punisher's body. A decent way to die, he just gave it. After returning to the first floor, he picked up the bag that he had thrown away before, put the rifle in again, and left the building with the bag. Under the watchful eye of an unidentified watcher, he returned to the car with the bag, started the car and left. Continental Hotel. After finishing the Punisher, he went straight back to the hotel and handed over the used pistol and rifle to the sommelier. In fact, even if he continues to use these guns in the future, it is not a big problem. But more is worse than less. Besides, with his current income, he can completely use it and throw it away. This is not those high-tech steel suits of Tony Stark, it is not worth a lot of money. After handing over the gun to the sommelier, just when he was considering whether to go back to the office to have a look, or go to the hotel bar to have fun, his cell phone suddenly rang. Unfamiliar number. Hello, Mr. Traveler, I'm Jack from the Rising Tide organization, the one who contacted you yesterday. An electronically disguised voice came from the other end of the phone. Tell me directly, what did you find? That, we didn't find the source of the anonymous call. Besides, they want to ask you to meet. I didn't find the source, the other party made an appointment to meet, what is this all about? Be clear, Russell said with some displeasure. Jack didn't dare to hide it, and told the whole story of the incident. Neither Russell nor the mysterious man behind the anonymous phone call can offend Jack and his Rising Tide organization. Although the Rising Tide organization has a certain reputation in the hacker world, in the final analysis, they are just a group of hackers typing on the keyboard. For ordinary people and ordinary organizations, their hacking level is very high, but compared with real intelligence agencies, especially those with official background, their hacking level is barely passable. It only took a minute or two for Jack to tell the whole story. After receiving the remuneration from Russell, the Rising Tide organization began an investigation of the anonymous phone calls. At the beginning, they didn't encounter any problems, and bit by bit they dug up the various proxies and fake IPs used by anonymous phones. However, just as they were about to dig out the true location of the anonymous phone, an accident happened. The Rising Tide organization, which relies on hacking skills to make a living in the underground world, encountered an anti-invasion. To make matters worse, they did not resist the counter-invasion of the other party. The next thing is very simple. The opponent broke through their firewall and locked their location. 
Just when Jack and the others were going to run away immediately and go to other places to avoid the limelight, the other party took the initiative to contact them and made a small request to them. Contact Russell, and tell Russell the news of the meeting, which is the request made by the other party. So, the scene just now happened. After listening to Jack's narration, Russell did not reply immediately, but thought for a while. In terms of hacking level, the mysterious person behind the anonymous phone, or the mysterious organization, is obviously much higher than the Rising Tide organization. In the case of being hacked, anti-invading the other party, and it was successful, this is not something that ordinary hackers or intelligence agencies can do. You must know that the Rising Tide organization is not a small organization composed of ordinary hackers. They are a hacker organization that specializes in mining confidential information of government agencies. They believe that the government has violated the people's right to know and concealed all kinds of unknown and confidential information. And what they have to do is to dig out these hidden confidential information and let every citizen of the beautiful country know this information. Although they occasionally take part-time jobs in the underground world to maintain a living, their main job is to excavate various confidential information that the government has not released to the public. Russell had never dealt with the rising tide before. However, this does not mean that he does not understand the rising tide organization. If nothing else, Sky, the genius hacker in the rising tide organization, doesn't know much about him. Although the mysterious person behind the anonymous phone has not revealed any identity-related information, Russell is basically certain that behind the anonymous phone is Snake Shield. There are not many organizations that can make the Rising Tide organization collapse, and the only one with a sneaky style of work is the Snake Shield. If it was Shield, they would be more generous. For example, arrest him directly, and then put him in a special prison specially designed to detain superpower criminals, that is, a place like an island prison or a dome prison. Send me the time and place of the meeting. Also, get your money back. Russell said to Jack. Okay, sir. Without any hesitation, Jack on the other end of the phone immediately sent the time and place of the meeting and returned the $50,000 payment that Russell paid. In a few seconds, Russell received the meeting information and the account arrival information. After hanging up the phone, he looked at the meeting message sent by Jack. At 9 o'clock tonight, a French restaurant in Manhattan. It's quite picky about places. The French restaurant we met was a very famous restaurant. Although it has only been open for a few years, the reputation of the restaurant is not small at all, and it is not difficult to make reservations. Russell had previously dated Diana at the restaurant. It was their date for the first anniversary of their relationship. It took him several days and some personal connections to finally make an appointment on the anniversary. He couldn't remember exactly what he ate that night. The only impression he had of that date was that Diana that night was not so enthusiastic. Because Diana was too enthusiastic, the next day, he made a special trip to Porsche's 4S shop to repair the co-pilot's seat, doors, and rear window glass. After reading Jack's message, Russell sent a message to Diana who was at work, telling Diana that he would work a little overtime tonight and would not go back to eat. Of course, he didn't forget to tell Diana that the Punisher had been dealt with by him. On the fourth floor of the beautiful country natural history museum, the Birds and Dinosaurs Hall. Diana, wearing a white women's suit, stood in front of the huge Eolus pterosaur skeleton, her jet black and smooth hair was twisted in a somewhat dangerous hairstyle, looking at the message that Russell had just sent. Beside her, stood a black man in a black trench coat, with a blindfold on his left eye, and without a single hair on his head. This black man has an aura of saying no strangers can come in, and the whole person doesn't look kind at all. This black man is none other than Nick Fury, the current director of S.H.I.E.L.D. Nick Fury and stood quietly, and when Diana replied to the message, he slowly said, Miss Prince, your man has been a little restless these past few days, which is not the same as when we the agreement reached is different. So what, do you still want to arrest him? Diana put away her phone turned to look at Nick Fury, and said calmly. He went a little too far, and if he continues like this, we can only do things according to the rules. Nick Fury continued. That's your rule, not mine. If you want to take action against him, you will be at your own risk. Diana replied to Nick Fury coldly. Looking at Diana, who had no plans to retreat at all, Nick Fury's already dark complexion became even darker. 
Diana is not an ordinary person, Shield knew about it four years ago. To be precise, Shield knew about the day after Diana came to this world. Unlike other people in the Bureau, Nick Fury did not regard Diana as a superpower who suddenly awakened his superpowers but regarded her as an alien visitor. Although Diana's appearance is very similar to the Earth people, it can basically be said that there is no difference with the Earth people. But Nick Fury knows that aliens who look like Earth people do not exist. Decades ago, he had seen many aliens who looked like humans on Earth. Among them is the powerful lady who was originally an Earthling and later had an alien blood. Diana gave Nick Fury no respect at all, even if he is the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. After speaking, she ignored what Nick Fury would think, turned around and left. Looking at the back of Diana leaving, Nick Fury wanted to say something, but in the end he didn't say anything. When Diana completely left the Bird and Dinosaur Exhibition Hall, Maria Hill, dressed in casual clothes and short hair, came to Nick Fury. Maria Hill is one of Nick Fury's right-hand men and one of the few people who is completely trusted by Nick Fury. After coming to Nick Fury's side, Maria Hill quietly made a gesture. The next second, the originally lively exhibition hall quickly quieted down. Those S.H.I.E.L.D. agents who looked no different from normal tourists left the exhibition hall without a word. After a few seconds, there were only a few real tourists and the two of them left in the exhibition hall. The few real tourists had absolutely no idea what was going on. They only saw that the tourists left the exhibition hall in a tacit understanding, as if they heard a fire alarm, they evacuated as quickly as possible. Agent Hill ignored the real tourists and said to Nick Fury, the potential risk to travelers is getting higher and higher, and if you continue to let him mess up, maybe it will trigger a mass outbreak at some point, crisis event. Raise his surveillance level and reject Coulson's arrest application by the way. Also, send a copy of Diana Prince's information to Coulson, it's time to let him know some truth. Nick Fury said helplessly, it's not that he didn't consider arresting Russell, but he never agreed to Coulson's arrest application. The reason is very simple, because Diana, Russell's current abilities are still within the scope of S.H.I.E.L.D. But Diana was different. Four years ago, Diana used several one-sided battles to fully explain what it means to be unilaterally crushed without suspense. In the last arrest, Nick Fury even had the idea of calling Captain Marvel directly. Fortunately, he resisted the urge at the time. Otherwise, whether S.H.I.E.L.D. still exists is a question. After explaining Agent Hill, Nick Fury left the exhibition hall without looking back. Continental Hotel, Speakeasy Bar. After receiving Diana's reply, Russell went to the bar to pass the time. There are still five or six hours before nine o'clock in the evening. Since there is nothing to do for the time being, I have to come to the bar to drink and listen to music. In fact, the hotel has a lot to offer if he wants to have fun. In addition to the bar, there is also a casino in the hotel. If you are not interested in drinking and gambling, the hotel can also provide various girls on call. Whether you like a charming MILF, a professional secretary, or a youthful college girl, as long as you can afford gold coins, the hotel has a way to satisfy you. Of course, not all types of women have them, and those who are too young will not be provided by the hotel. Although the services are all killers who kill without blinking an eye, the hotel still has the most basic morality. After staying at the hotel until the evening, and after dinner, Russell took a taxi to the French restaurant where they met. Although his Porsche 911 was parked on the street next to the hotel gate, he had absolutely no intention of driving there. The ghost knows what the chat will be like later, he doesn't want to risk his car. He is not short of money now, and he even has a lot of savings. There is no problem for him to buy a car. His current Porsche is an old model two years ago. But even so, he still has no plans to change the car. Not for anything else, just because there are many memories of him and Diana on this car. There are healthy and unhealthy ones, and many more. I don't know if it was fate or not, but the taxi he stopped at random turned out to be the young Indian with a heavy accent last time. This Indian guy looks young, only in his twenties, but his driving skills are very good. Russell experienced the superb driving skills of this Indian-born brother last time. It cost $200. The Indian-born brother didn't expect that he would actually pull Russell again. After Russell got into the car, 
the Indian boy said with a smile on his face, Sir, where are you going this time, are you in a hurry? Don't rush, you can drive slowly. After speaking, he told the Indian brother the location of the restaurant. Okay, sir, although there is no way to earn an extra tip like the last time, the Indian boy is still smiling. The traffic situation in New York is as bad as ever. Unless it is late at night, otherwise, traffic jams are inevitable. It took half an hour to stop and go all the way, and Russell finally came to the restaurant where they met. Although the little Indian brother didn't show extra driving skills this time, when he got off the car, Russell still gave him $200 bills. This is not to reward the Indian boy for his driving skills, but to reward him for being quiet along the way. Russell doesn't like chattering drivers. In the restaurant, Russell looked at the middle-aged man in front of him and didn't say a word. The middle-aged man sitting in front of him was wearing an expensive handmade custom suit, and his hair was meticulously groomed exuding the temperament of a rich man all over his body. Although it was the first time they met, Russell knew who the man in front of him was. Sunil Bakshi, a little-known rich man. Of course, this is just his apparent identity. His true identity is the high-level cadre of Hydra and the capable general of Whitehall. Mr. Bradley, I took the liberty to ask you to meet. I hope you don't take offense. Bakshi said sincerely, I wouldn't be surprised to meet you, but I'm not very satisfied with your meddling in my life. Before anyone could investigate the anonymous phone call, he suspected it was from Hydra. The appearance of Bakshi just proved this. It's just out of desperation. If you need any compensation, Mr. Bradley, you can speak up, and I'll be satisfied. Bakshi can now say that he has given Russell enough face, and a good attitude is like an apology. Okay, let's not talk nonsense. Tell me, what exactly do you want to do? Russell was too lazy to go around in circles with Bakshi, and asked directly. We appreciate talents like you, Mr. Bradley. If you don't mind, we hope you can join our organization. Bakshi said with a smile. He didn't name Hydra right away, but used a more euphemism. Join you, you don't even want to say the name of the organization you belong to. Isn't this kind of invitation too playful? Although he already knew that the organization Bakshi belonged to was Hydra, he knew this through the prophet halo of the traveler. He didn't plan to tell Bakshi all the information he knew. Bakshi didn't answer Russell's question directly, and said with a smile, I wonder, Russell, what do you think about the official agency like S.H.I.E.L.D. and superheroes like Spider-Woman and Fantastic Four? Bakshi quietly changed his name. Instead of calling him Mr. Bradley, he called him by his first name. Although this is only a small trick in the art of speaking, it can be seen that Bakshi is a person who knows how to draw in relationships with other people. I'm a killer, what do you think I can think of? Russell picked up the wine glass on the table and took a sip. Not whiskey, but champagne. What is the name of our organization, I can't tell you now. However, I can assure you that we are definitely not an organization like S.H.I.E.L.D. In terms of behavior, we are more like the Continental Hotel you are working with now. Bakshi still didn't plan to tell Russell the name of Hydra, and said with a smile. Mr. Bakshi, if your organization is so mysterious that you can't even say its name, then forget it. Although I'm not a good person, I don't like living in hiding. Thank you for your hospitality, farewell. After speaking, Russell got up immediately, ignored Bakshi, and walked straight towards the door of the restaurant. The reason why he came here tonight is to find out which organization is behind the anonymous call. Although Bakshi never revealed the name of Hydra, it had no effect on him at all. The moment he saw Bakshi, he already knew the answer. Bakshi watched Russell leave, and had no intention of getting up to keep him. Like Nick Fury, what Hydra is really interested in is not Russell, but his live-in girlfriend Diana. Russell does possess some extraordinary abilities, but now he is far less valuable than Diana. What Hydra wants is not a killer with extraordinary physique, but an invincible warrior as powerful as a god. Four years ago, Diana held a sword and a shield and swept the shield arresting team with unstoppable force, which not only left a deep impression on Nick Fury, but also made Hydra understand something. It's called high-end combat. Leaving the restaurant, Russell took a taxi back to the Continental Hotel, retrieved his car, and drove towards the apartment. Although Bakshi disguised well and didn't even say the name of Hydra, he still guessed what Hydra was thinking. 
Diana. It wasn't him that Hydra saw, but Diana. After yesterday's confession game, he knew that when Diana first crossed into this world, she had some, little, conflicts with S.H.I.E.L.D. Knowing this, and confirming that the anonymous phone call was arranged by Hydra, then it is not difficult to guess what Hydra's plan is. To put it simply, this is a test to test how important he is in Diana's mind. Diana, who hadn't used her extraordinary abilities for more than three years, knew that he was in so-called, dangerous life, and without any hesitation, immediately put on her battle armor to rescue him. After confirming that Diana would rather risk her peaceful life being completely disrupted to save him, Hydra knew how to win over Diana. It is definitely impossible to win over Diana directly. S.H.I.E.L.D. has proven this. Four years ago, when Diana first crossed over, the plan made by S.H.I.E.L.D. was not to capture her, but to absorb her into S.H.I.E.L.D. It's just that the talks collapsed later, and the talent introduction plan became an arrest plan. But unfortunately, the arrest plan also failed, and it failed more thoroughly than the talent introduction plan. With the lessons of S.H.I.E.L.D., of course Hydra would not choose to directly contact Diana. Thus, Russell became the bridge in the middle. By wooing Russell, the effect of wooing Diana on the side is achieved. This approach of Hydra is very in line with their always wretched and insidious style. The only thing they didn't expect was that Russell was a traveler with a prophet aura. Sky Apartments Diana, who had already eaten dinner, was sitting on the sofa in the living room with a boring anthropology book in her hand. After seeing Russell coming back, she put down the book in her hand, got up, came to Russell, and gave Russell a hug. Have you finished working overtime? Diana asked softly. Well, the anonymous phone number was found out. It was called by Hydra. Russell briefly talked about his meeting with Bakshi. As soon as he finished speaking, Diana frowned. Obviously, she also guessed what Hydra was planning. The director of S.H.I.E.L.D. came to the museum to find me today. He told me that you have been a little restless these days and wanted me to take care of you. Diana quickly recounted what happened at the museum. After listening to her story, Russell suddenly realized a problem. In the underground world and the killer world, he is a famous traveler. But in front of large organizations like S.H.I.E.L.D. and HYDRA, he became Diana's weakness, a weakness they used to target Diana. In terms of hard power, he current Diana is indeed much stronger than him. In a serious battle, now he is facing Diana, not to say that he has no chance of winning, he can only say that the chance of winning is very slim. It's so slim that you may not be able to win one in ten games. Cannot be done. If you continue like this, you will be suspected of eating soft rice. Although it is a skill to eat soft rice hard, but eating too much is bad for your teeth. Diana noticed Russell's mood change, stroked his face, and said slowly, do you mind these things? Although Diana looks like a royal sister and a big heroine on weekdays, that's just her image in front of others. In front of Russell, she was still very gentle and considerate. Um, it's a little bit, but don't worry, this situation won't last forever. Don't forget, my superpowers will continue to evolve and awaken. As soon as he finished speaking, Russell's right hand landed on Diana's peach buttocks, which were round and upturned and had an excellent feel. Diana gave him a charming look, and had absolutely no intention of removing his right hand. The next morning, after eating breakfast prepared by Diana in the apartment, Russell, who had not done detective work for more than a week, drove to the office. The original office is still under maintenance, so he came to the temporary office on the seventh floor. The landlord Sean did not live up to the money he paid. Although the temporary office on the seventh floor is not as good as the original office, it is well organized and has everything it should have. Even the signboard of the Octopus Monster Private Detective Agency, at the door, Sean helped him re-customize one. I don't know if it was because he was afraid that Russell would be bored, but Sean actually kept a few magazines and newspapers on the desk in the office. Magazine is a Maxim magazine published exclusively for male readers. In the same category as Playboy magazine. The only difference is that Maxim is a little more restrained than Playboy. At least they didn't directly publish female fruit photos. There are several motto magazines on the table, but without exception, all of them are from the previous issue, and there is not one of the current issue. Just like magazines, newspapers were also published a few days ago, but the current day was missing. Although the landlord Sean is a big spender, 
when it's time to save, this guy is not an ordinary saver. Because there was no commission to deal with, Russell directly picked up the newspaper on the table and browsed with a bored face. The truth about the arrest of the villain Rhino, the birth of a new hero. Looking for a new hero, who is the mysterious female swordsman. The rise of female power. Invisible woman, spider woman, mysterious swordsman or form a new team of heroes. What Russell is reading now is various reports about the arrest of Rhino Man. The rhinoceros, who was supposed to be the protagonist, was reduced to a background without any suspense in front of the mysterious heroine. The headlines in the newspaper are exaggerated and the content is more explosive. Among them, there is also a newspaper swearing that the one who defeated the rhino was not a new heroine at all, but a man with transvestites. A transvestite man, as expected of the media, for the sake of traffic, he can say anything. Although there are many related reports, there is no useful information at all. Even the rhino man who has fallen into the hands of the New York Police Department can't tell what the person who defeated him looks like. After reading the newspaper on the table, Russell picked up the Motto magazine on the table. Motto is worthy of being a men's magazine, and most of the content in it is in line with men's tastes. Especially the choice of cover girls and female models. Russell is holding the issue from December last year. The cover girl above is a pair of blonde twins with a protruding figure and a charming appearance. At the beginning, he was attracted by the twins. However, when he took a serious look at the figure and appearance of the twin girls, he suddenly remembered something. Maxim Magazine, Twin Girls, December, etc. Wouldn't this be the home run of Tony Stark's quote magazine cover girl? Thinking of this, Russell turned on the, secondhand, computer prepared by the landlord Sean, and searched for Tony Stark's name on the internet. He is obviously a genius inventor, but when you search for Tony Stark's name, the first thing that comes out is his various lace news. Female star, female model, female entrepreneur, female secretary. Russell is not interested to know that Stark has been dating another actress or model recently. So, he changed his search term and started to search for Stark Industries news. After changing the search term to Stark Industries, he quickly found the information he was looking for. Stark Industries has received another new order from the military, and the U.S. military base in Afghanistan will soon be equipped with Jericho missiles. Nightmare for terrorists. Stark Industries, Freedom, Series Top Work, Jericho missile is officially on sale. Sure enough, Tony Stark is going to Afghanistan to sell missiles again. Not long after he crossed into this world, Russell knew that this was not the well-known movie universe. However, this does not mean that the fate of superheroes will be completely different. Take Captain America, for example. Apart from being dug up earlier, Steve Rogers' life trajectory hasn't changed much. At least for now, that's how it is. Rogers is still the Brooklyn kid who was injected with the Super Soldier Serum. He was the biggest contributor to defeating Hydra, and was finally frozen for decades. If the turning point of Roger's fortune was the draft medical examination that night at the Stark Industry Fair, then the turning point of Stark's fortune was the kidnapping in Afghanistan. Stark wouldn't be Iron Man if he hadn't been kidnapped. A certain parallel universe has proved this with facts. After reading the news that Stark Industries was going to sell Jericho missiles to U.S. bases in Afghanistan, Russell closed the page. Although he knew that Tony was about to be kidnapped by the Ten Rings gang, he had no intention of intervening. Not only that, he was even considering whether to take this opportunity to short the stock of Stark Industries to earn a, small, extra money. Just when he was considering whether to contact his stockbroker, the system suddenly popped up a message. Reward. Endosymbiotic battle armor. Status. Inactive. Activation condition. Prevent Tony Stark from becoming Iron Man due to the kidnapping incident, activation effect, after activation, get endosymbiotic battle armor. The inner symbiotic armor is the armor worn by Tony in the comic, Ultimate Iron Man, also known as the symbiotic armor, or the white tank armor. This is the only set of silver white armor among Tony's many armors, except for the unpainted Mark II. The endosymbiotic battle armor is made of all liquid intelligent metal, and the way of dressing is to instantly solidify and combine. Compared with other battle armors that need to rely on technical elements for initial binding, symbiote battle armor is much more convenient in terms of dressing. 
More importantly, the symbiote armor can be activated through telepathy. The basic materials extracted from the symbiote also have a certain repairing ability, similar to the self-repairing capabilities of the Nano Armor Mark 50 and Mark 85. Because it is plated with a layer of chrome, the armor looks shiny, high-profile and pretty. Pretty as hell, this is Tony's own description. Russell has reservations about this. Although the endosymbiotic armor is not the most powerful set among Tony's many armors, it is definitely the most special one. Because this is the armor worn by the betraying villain Tony. Although I don't know how the system will send the reward of the endosymbiotic battle armor, the activation conditions for the reward have been opened, and Russell will not let go of this armor. White endosymbiotic battle armor, black venom symbiote. Black and white, perfect. After closing the reward message that popped up in the system, Russell took out his phone and booked a first-class ticket to Afghanistan tomorrow. After booking the ticket, he contacted the Continental Hotel in Afghanistan through the Continental Hotel in New York. Booking a room, booking a vehicle, booking guns and ammunition, a map of the U.S. military base in Afghanistan. People haven't set out yet, but Russell is ready to spend a few days in Afghanistan. There are many ways to stop Tony from becoming Iron Man because of the kidnapping incident. Kidnap Tony in advance. Stop the kidnapping of the Ten Rings. Before Tony builds Mark I, save him and Ethan together. As long as Tony didn't meet Ethan, or Ethan didn't die, he wouldn't be Iron Man because of the kidnapping. As for whether Tony will become Iron Man in the future, that's none of his business. As long as the endosymbiotic armor is in hand, Tony won't talk about being Iron Man. Even if he gave up science and switched to magic, and then went to compete with Doctor Strange for the position of Supreme Mage, Russell would not bother to care about him. After getting ready to go to Afghanistan, Russell did not forget to ask the Continental Hotel to investigate Tony's intelligence. Continental Hotel. Karen in a neat suit stood at the front desk, frowning and listening to Russell's call. Mr. Bradley, it's convenient to ask, what do you want his information for? Personal reasons, inconvenient. Russell would not tell Karen his true purpose. Mr. Bradley, this is not a trivial matter. I hope you will seriously consider it. Why don't you contact Mr. Winston first? When Russell asked him to contact the Afghan Continental Hotel just now, Karen didn't think there was any problem. Ordinary people in Afghanistan are a little poorer, but there are not many rich people there. It is normal for Russell to receive a commission from Afghanistan. However, when he called for the second time, and it was the latest information from Tony Stark, Karen realized that something was wrong. Afghanistan. Stark. Karen immediately thought of the news that Stark Industries would sell the Jericho missiles to the U.S. base in Afghanistan. As a behemoth that integrates the killer world, the Continental Hotel has a lot of dealings with Stark Industries. Although the hotel does not have access to the large weapons of Stark Industries, such as Jericho missiles, but the individual weapons produced by Stark Industries are deeply loved by the majority of killers. There are basically no disadvantages other than the price is a bit expensive. Under normal circumstances, a killer group like the Continental Hotel cannot buy weapons produced by Stark Industries. But if there is demand, there will be a market. In the black market, it is not difficult to buy Stark Industrial weapons. Karen asked Russell to contact Winston, the hotel manager. It was not that his authority was insufficient to obtain Tony's information, but that Tony's identity was a little troublesome. Although Tony has not yet become Iron Man, he is the largest weapons supplier to the military and the most well-known arms dealer and weapons inventor in the world. Among the many capital forces in the United States, arms dealers are always at the top. And Tony Stark is one of the best arms dealers. If Russell kills Tony Stark, Karen doesn't know whether the high table can withstand the corresponding consequences. But he was certain that the Continental Hotel in New York could not bear it. If Russell was just a lone killer, it would be fine. The problem is, he is not a lone killer, he is a listed killer of the Continental Hotel. I'm not here to kill Stark, you don't have to worry about me causing trouble to the hotel. Even though he said so, Karen still didn't believe it. It's fine if you don't want to give it. I'll find someone else. After speaking, Russell hung up the phone. Looking for information on Stark from Karen is just because of convenience, not that he has no other channels besides the mainland hotel. Don't put your eggs in the same basket. 
he has been a killer for several years anyway, and he has several private channels. After hanging up the phone, Russell turned on the old computer, which he didn't know how many hands, and logged into a forum on the dark web. After finding the intelligence dealer who had cooperated several times before, he sent the request and the deposit. Stark Industries released the news of the sale of Jericho missiles to U.S. military bases in Afghanistan, but there was no specific delivery time. Judging from the fact that the activation conditions of the reward have been opened, the time of settlement should be in the near future. Although he had already booked a flight to Afghanistan tomorrow, it was just a precaution. If Tony didn't pass so quickly, he didn't plan to go so soon. Whether it's kidnapping Tony or rescuing him from the Ten Rings gang, it doesn't take much time. A day or two in advance will do. Just as he transferred the deposit to the intelligence dealer, his cell phone rang. Winston called. I said it, I'm not going to kill Tony Stark. After pressing the button, Russell said directly. I believe you didn't kill Tony Stark. I called because a client named him to entrust you. Winston said slowly. What commission? Russell did not ask who the client was. They will be entrusted through the hotel, basically those who do not want to reveal their identities. Otherwise, it is cheaper to entrust privately than to go to a hotel, at least there is no need to pay extra fees. Although it is a little more expensive to entrust through a hotel, the advantage is that you do not need to contact the killer, and you will not reveal your true identity. Kill Daredevil for $20 million. I'm not interested, don't pick it up. The salary of 20 million US dollars is not low, and Daredevil is not a particularly difficult target. If it was normal, Russell might have some interest. But now, in front of the reward of endosymbiotic armor, let alone 20 million US dollars, even if it is 200 million US dollars, he is not interested. After being rejected by Russell, Winston did not hang up the phone, and continued, customers can increase the price, can you tell me the amount? It's not a question of compensation. I'm not in the mood recently. Let's find someone else. Russell didn't give Winston a chance to bargain, and hung up the phone. Although he didn't ask Winston who the client was, after hearing that the target was Daredevil, he roughly guessed who the client was. To get Winston to call and talk about it in person, the client is definitely not an ordinary person. Having a grudge against Daredevil, and being able to make Winston treat him so solemnly, it is no surprise that this generous client is the famous underworld emperor Jin Bing. After hanging up Winston's call, Russell picked up the motto magazine on the table and admired the portraits of female models in it. This is a good figure, a woman who cannot be controlled with one hand. This set of underwear is a bit interesting. The way to buy it is. Time passed little by little. More than two hours later, an intelligence dealer in the dark web sent a message. What he asked the intelligence traffickers to investigate was not particularly classified information, just whether Tony Stark was still in Los Angeles. If it was, it would have been under surveillance until Tony Stark left Los Angeles. Opening the forum's private message and taking a look, Russell couldn't help but scolded. Tony Stark is not in Los Angeles right now. To be precise, Tony left Los Angeles on his private jet three days ago. Tony left Los Angeles three days ago, which means that his plan to kidnap Tony in advance, or stop the Ten Rings gang from kidnapping Tony, ends before it starts. To stop Tony from becoming Iron Man because of the kidnapping incident, there are only two options left. Rescue Tony and Ethan before he can build the Mark I. Or, just kill Tony. As long as Tony is killed before he appears in Mark III, even if he makes the Iron Suit, he can't become Iron Man. Without a corresponding heroic event, Tony with a steel suit is at most a billionaire and a high-tech suit. Killing Tony is simple and rude. Once you've done it, you can definitely get the reward of endosymbiotic battle armor without any suspense. But Russell did not prioritize this option. Although the endosymbiotic battle armor is a very powerful set among Tony's many battle armors, it is definitely not the most powerful set. Just to prevent Tony from becoming Iron Man because of the kidnapping incident, the system gave the reward of endosymbiotic armor. If Tony continues to live, there may be various rewards such as the Tengen Group armor, the Godslayer armor, and the Sword in the Stone armor in the future. As Obadiah said, Tony is a chicken that lays golden eggs. Killing Tony for a set of endosymbiotic battle armor is a bit too wasteful. 
to the owner of the Thanos Noble Phantasm, the Finger Snap Tool Man, and the Great Wishing Art. Such a person should not simply die in a cave in Afghanistan. After reading the information sent by the intelligence dealer, Russell first ordered a few pieces of underwear according to the purchase method noted in the magazine and according to Diana's size. After doing this, he left the office and drove back to the apartment. Although Tony now has a high probability of falling into the hands of the Ten Rings gang, he is not in a hurry. The terrorists of the Ten Rings gang will not kill Tony for a while, and it doesn't matter if a day later passes. If he remembered correctly, it took Tony three months in the cave to make the Mark I. Tony just left Los Angeles on a private jet three days ago. Counting the flight time, he has only been kidnapped for two days now. Tony at this time, not to mention the Mark I, even the small arc reactor has not yet come out, so there is no need to worry at all. The next day, Russell, who had an in-depth exchange with Diana overnight, drove to the airport alone. Although I didn't sleep much last night, it wasn't a problem at all. It takes almost 20 hours to fly from New York to Kabul, and he has time to catch up on sleep. After boarding the plane, he declined the flight attendant's caring service and the small note handed over, and put on a blindfold and went straight to sleep. Kabul Airport Russell left the airport with simple luggage and called a taxi to the Continental Hotel branch in Kabul. Compared with the Continental Hotel in New York, the environment of the Continental Hotel in Kabul is not a little bit worse. However, he didn't pay too much attention to this, and asked the hotel attendant to deliver the various equipment that he had ordered to the room. Pistols, rifles, sniper rifles, bazookas, gatling guns, tactical grenades, daggers, tons of bullets and magazines. Off-road vehicle keys, mountain combat uniforms, maps of Kuna province, satellite phones, GPS locators, $50,000 or $60,000, individual rations and drinking water. After checking the equipment, Russell changed into a mountain combat uniform, and hung the pistol, tactical grenade, dagger, etc. on the tactical belt. For the rest of the equipment, he had the hotel attendant move it into the off-road vehicle downstairs. Although the service object of the hotel is killers, it is the first time that the hotel waiter has seen a person like Russell with so many weapons. Ignoring the waiter's surprise, Russell started the car and drove towards Kuna province in the east. The U.S. military base that received the Jericho missile was in Kuna province, and Tony was kidnapped on his way back to the base. Tony was imprisoned in a cave, and the place where the Mark I crashed was a desert. Combined with this information, a general area can be locked. The exact location, Russell is still unclear, but he has a way to find out the relevant information. Colleagues are not just enemies, they are also the easiest people to inquire about internal information. This is why the police like to use undercover agents and informants when dealing with gangsters. A lot of information cannot be obtained from outside channels. But if you get it from the inside, it's much easier. Other terrorists in Kuna province may not know that the weapons dealer kidnapped by the Ten Rings gang is Tony, but they must know where these guys from the Ten Rings gang are hiding. Kuna province, in a small village in the mountains. From the outside, it looks like an ordinary little village. But Russell has just confirmed that this small village is a terrorist settlement. To distinguish whether these villages are normal villages or terrorist settlements, just look at the population ratio in the villages. In a normal village, there are old people, children, and women. The terrorists' settlement is completely different, almost all adult males. In the square of the village, Russell, who had more weapons than U.S. Special Forces, sat on the big stone in the center of the square, playing with daggers while scanning the kneeling terrorists. Now, I ask, you answer, do you understand? Russell said to the kneeling terrorists. There are about 30 terrorists kneeling in front of him now. Of course, the terrorists in the village are not only these people, but they are the only ones who are still alive. What do you want to know? A terrorist stood up and said to him. Boom, the gunshots sounded immediately. As soon as the terrorist finished speaking, his head was shot by Russell, and he fell to the ground with a thud. I asked you to answer the question, but didn't ask you to get up. Russell said expressionlessly, You ask, as long as we know, we will not hide it. Another terrorist's voice rang out. With the lessons learned, the terrorist did not get up, knelt on the ground and said. Boom, another shot sounded. 
The terrorist who was kneeling on the ground and talking also ushered in a headshot. I ask, you answer, I didn't ask, so don't talk, understand. This time, the remaining terrorists learned to be smart. He didn't get up, didn't speak, knelt on the ground and nodded silently. However, they still heard gunshots. After the bang, another terrorist lost his life. I don't like men who nod too quickly. Russell's tone was very relaxed. But the terrorists in front of him are about to be driven mad by him. If you stand up, you will die, if you take the initiative to answer, you will die. Even if you nod your head too quickly, you will die. Now Russell, in their eyes, is no different from a devil in human skin. Looking at the appearance of these terrorists who dared not speak out, Russell nodded with satisfaction. Although killing people is not something to be praised, he has no psychological pressure to kill these terrorists. If anyone can provide the information I want, not only will he not die, but the money is also his. While speaking, Russell unzipped the bag, leaked the dollars inside, and then threw the bag in front of these terrorists. A few days ago, the Ten Rings gang kidnapped an arms dealer from the U.S. military. I want to know their current location. Chapter 31 Give the stick first, then the radish. To get the other party to spit out information, blind violence and death threats are not the best way. There is never a shortage of stubborn guys in the world. If you only use violence and death threats, you may not be able to get the information you want. At this time, appropriate material temptation is necessary. The $60,000 in the bag is not an amazing material temptation for people living in developed countries. But for these terrorists living in Afghanistan, the $60,000 is enough to completely change their lives. With the 60,000 US dollars, they can smuggle to other countries and start a normal life again, instead of living in fear in this mountain area. Many people think that terrorists join terrorist organizations because of their beliefs. But the fact is that, except for those terrorists who are not very short of money, most of the terrorists have embarked on this crooked road because they can no longer live a poor life. People, always have to live. If you can't even live, don't expect people to have such noble morals and sentiments. Looking at the corpses of their companions around, and the dollars in the bag, these terrorists quickly made a choice. Although everyone is a freedom fighter against the US military, they are not members of the Ten Rings Gang. Sacrificing his life to keep secrets for the Ten Rings Gang, only a fool would do this. A few minutes later, Russell got the general information. Although the terrorists in front of him didn't know exactly where Tony was being held, they knew that the Ten Rings gang probably had a stronghold in those places. There are three bases in total. The worst luck is only three trips. Not a big problem. Russell took out the map and checked the location of the terrorists, and then put the map back together. Thank you for your cooperation, the dollars in the bag are just. He glanced at the 30 or so terrorists who were kneeling on the ground, as if deciding who to give these dollars to. But it is not the truth. As he spoke, a black tentacle as thick as an arm sprang from his back. Under the watchful eyes of these terrorists, black tentacle picked up the Gatling gun that he had put aside. This is, just as these terrorists looked at the black tentacle surging out of his back with disbelief, the Gatling gun opened fire. Da 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 da. The fierce gunshots sounded suddenly, and the bullets flew towards the terrorists like a torrential rain. These terrorists didn't even have a chance to get up, so they were swept away by Gatling guns. When all the terrorists in front of him were sent with Gatling guns to meet God, Russell stood up and picked up the bag in the ground. The $60,000 is indeed what he used to tempt these terrorists. But the temptation was temptation, he never thought of giving them the money. This is all the hard-earned money he earned in the hail of bullets. If the money was spent on Diana, he would not hesitate. But he is not willing to spend a hundred times on these terrorists. After picking up the bag, several black tentacles emerged from his body, and he picked up the rocket launchers, rifles, sniper rifles and other weapons one by one. After walking back to the off-road vehicle parked a few hundred meters away from the village, he started the vehicle and drove towards the nearest Ten Rings Gang stronghold. Somewhere in the mountains, one of the strongholds of the Ten Rings Gang. In a dark cave, Tony, who had just been asked to make Jericho missiles by the Ten Rings Gang, sat in front of the stove and looked at the flames in front of him with a lonely expression. At his feet, there is a battery for the vehicle. 
The battery is connected to an electromagnet in his chest, preventing the shrapnel from entering his heart. Stark, your people are definitely looking for you, but in the mountains, it's hard for them to find this place. You saw it just now. Those weapons outside are your masterpieces. Your whole life's work has fallen into the hands of those murderers, so you want to die like this. Is this the last revolt of the great Tony Stark? Wearing a suit and wearing thin-rimmed glasses, Ethan sat next to Tony and said slowly. Why should I waste my energy? They will kill me sooner or later. Even if I don't kill me, I can only live for a week. Tony pointed to the electromagnet in his chest. Although the electromagnet on his chest temporarily saved his life, it could only last for a week at most. A week later, when the battery was depleted, shrapnel would enter his heart, causing him to die in agony. Then you should hurry up, don't you? Eason continued. Perhaps he was persuaded by Ethan, or more likely, Tony's desire to survive. No one wants to die inexplicably, especially Tony, who has been accustomed to the depraved life of capitalism since he was a child. There is still a good life waiting for him in the outside world, so he doesn't want to die in pain in a cave in Afghanistan. Tony's eyes regained his vigor, and self-rescue plans quickly flashed through his mind. More than ten minutes later. If this is my workshop, I want it to be well lit. Welding table, welding equipment, helmet, goggles, crucible, two sets of cutting tools. Tony told Ethan his request, and Ethan translated his words to the terrorists of the Ten Rings gang, Tony was redoing the cave in full swing, preparing to save himself. On the other side, Russell drove to the first stronghold of the Ten Rings gang. The first stronghold was not very far from the village where he had just been. If you drive there, it will only take more than an hour. Although the distance is not too far, the road conditions here are not generally bad. To make matters worse, the off-road vehicle he is currently driving is not comfortable at all. Russell feels like a rally driver now, driving an uncomfortable off-road vehicle and galloping on untouched pristine mountain roads. Using the Scandinavian pendulum for weight transfer, Russell, who usually does not usually run mountain roads, played drifting on the dusty mountain roads. If it weren't for the fact that there were no drainage channels on the mountain road here, he would have tried to turn around the famous drainage channel. Relying on the roughness and some delicate driving skills, it took Russell only one hour to arrive at the first stronghold of the Ten Rings gang. After a nice tailgating stop, the not-so-superior off-road vehicle made an overwhelmed sound, and white smoke constantly floated from the bonnet. Before he got out of the car, members of the Shiji gang who were more than 100 meters away opened fire on him. Bang 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 bang, bullets hit the car body like raindrops, and the sound of ding 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 rang continuously. When he was still one kilometer away, members of the Ten Rings gang in the stronghold found his trace. It's actually quite hard not to find out. The flying dust of off-road vehicles rushing and drifting clearly pointed out his position like a sign. Although these Ten Rings gang members don't know who is driving here. But one thing they can be sure of is that it is definitely not their own who drove over. Since he's not one of his own, it doesn't matter that he thinks so much. Of course, the practice of firing at will may lead to the so-called manslaughter. But that doesn't matter at all. This is Afghanistan. Here, the consequences of killing a person are not as serious as killing a donkey. At the moment when the gunshots sounded, Russell, who was sitting in the main driver's seat, did not hesitate and entered the venom form directly. Although his physical strength can resist bullets hard, but he can resist hard, it doesn't mean he has to resist hard. The originally spacious seat became crowded the moment he turned into Venom, like an adult sitting in a kindergarten child's chair. The bullets shot from a distance kept hitting the body of the off-road vehicle, and the window glass and tires were broken one after another. Russell, who had entered the form of Venom, ignored the bullets and glass fragments that fell on him, and a few black tentacles sprang up behind him, entangling the guns and various equipment on the rear seat. After wrapping everything in the back row, he exerted a little force, smashed the roof, and jumped out of the car with the guns and equipment behind him. The whole process sounds a bit complicated, but it all happened in a flash. The members of the Ten Rings gang in the distance didn't even realize what happened. They only saw a huge black figure jumping out of the car. 
Before they could see the specific appearance of the black figure, the huge black figure dragged all kinds of equipment and rushed towards them, like a cheetah rushing at full speed. Do not, not a cheetah, cheetahs are not so fast. Although Venom is not an anti-hero known for his speed, his speed is not slow at all. When possessed by ordinary people, Venom can run faster than a helicopter. When using all fours to run like a beast, the speed is twice as fast as when running on two legs. If it is the fastest speed, Venom can easily catch up with the bullet of the rifle or sniper rifle. At this time, the speed of Venom can reach supersonic Mach 2 or more. And all of this is just the manifestation of Venom possessing ordinary people. If the person possessed is not an ordinary person, but a superpower like Russell, the speed of the Venom will be even more amazing. The stronger the host, the stronger the symbiote will be. In the blink of an eye, Russell in the form of Venom came to them. Without giving these Ten Rings gang members time to be shocked and counterattack, the claws like the hands of demons swung out one after another, directly tearing the bodies of several Ten Rings gang members in a primitive way. Bright red blood spurted out in all directions, and the mutilated body was scattered all over the place. At the same time that he tore the members of the Ten Rings gang in front of him with both hands, dozens of black tentacles with the thickness of fingers sprouted from his body. The black tentacles that danced like octopus tentacles immediately turned into black spears, and lightning struck the surrounding Ten Rings members. Scoff! The black tentacles penetrated the bodies of the members of the Ten Rings without any suspense. Luckily, the black tentacles pierced the thigh and arm. Those who were less fortunate were stabbed by the black tentacles. However, no matter which part of the body was penetrated by the black tentacles, after penetrating their bodies, the black tentacles did not stop. These black tentacles first came back from behind, wrapping around their right hand like a python. Click. The sound of broken bones resounded one after another. The pain caused by the arm being forcibly broken made these Ten Rings gang members howl involuntarily. But their howls of pain didn't last long before they stopped in the summer. After breaking their right hand, the black tentacle still did not stop, crawling up the arm and wrapping around their necks. With just a little pressure on their trachea, these Ten Rings gang members who were howling because of the severe pain couldn't make any sound. Russell didn't directly break their necks, but just made them quiet for a while. When these Ten Rings gang members blushed and tried to pull away the black tentacles on their necks, Russell manipulated the black tentacles and lifted them up. At the same time, he released part of the symbiote on his face, revealing his right face. Where is Tony Stark? Russell raised a member of the Ten Rings gang in front of him and said slowly. He slightly loosened the black tentacles on the neck of the Ten Rings gang member, allowing him to breathe and speak freely. But unfortunately, this Ten Rings gang member did not cherish his kindness. After hearing his question, the Ten Rings gang member showed a fierce look and cursed. Russell was not in the mood to listen to his foul language. Click. The black tentacles directly twisted the guy's neck. After killing this guy, the black tentacles flicked lightly and threw the corpse out like garbage. At the same time as the corpse fell to the ground, Russell manipulated another black tentacle and brought the second guy over. A few minutes later, Russell released the Venom form and checked the location with the map and GPS locator. These Ten Rings gang members are very generous in providing the specific location where Tony is currently being held. After confirming where Tony was being held, he looked back at the off-road vehicle that had been completely reimbursed in the distance. We need to get a new means of transportation. With a thought, the only three remaining members of the Ten Rings gang were raised in front of him by the black tentacles. Although he removed the venom form, he did not remove all the black tentacles. The remaining three Ten Rings gang members were deliberately left behind by him. The three Ten Rings gang members had no other injuries except their right hand was twisted and pierced, and they were considered to be in relatively good condition. Glancing at the three Ten Rings gang members, Russell used the black tentacles to let the symbiote directly possess them. The broken right arm and the wound recovered quickly. In less than a second, their injuries completely recovered. After curing the three guys, Russell controlled the black tentacles to let them down. At the same time, black tentacles as thick as a baby's finger gushed out from the back of their necks, connecting Russell's right hand. When Sloane was testing Venom's abilities, he had an idea. Through the possession of the symbiote, the so-called Venom puppet is created. Now, 
he intends to formally test the idea. Although these three Ten Ring members are still alive, they are even stronger and healthier than ever before. But at this time, they have completely lost control of their bodies. Under Russell's control, they picked up underground sniper rifles, bazookas, gatling guns and other weapons. Except for pistols and daggers, which he still carried with him, Russell gave all other weapons to the members of the Ten Rings gang who had been reduced to Venom puppets. In theory, the Venom puppet is completely feasible. But to what extent it can be done, Russell can't say for sure. Currently, only Sloane and Frank the Punisher have experienced symbiotic possession. Although Russell did some small tests on them, he did not test this trick in actual combat. To give a very simple example, he doesn't even know the maximum control distance of the Venom puppet move. Although the symbiote can be transformed into various forms, there is a limit to this change. The black tentacles gushing out through the back of the neck, to be more precise, should be black silk threads. Russell controlled the three Ten Rings gang members to pick up the weapons on the ground. Then, he controlled them to move forward. As for himself, he stayed where he was. He wants to test how far these black silk threads can be manipulated, which is related to the actual combat value of the Venom puppet. Before crossing, Russell, a fan of anime and web articles, had seen many similar abilities. For example, the spirit body thread of the craftsman, the parasitic thread of the thread fruit, the chakra thread of the puppet master, and so on. Although the power and principles used are different, these methods can achieve a certain degree of puppet control. Russell is now using a similar approach. Through the possession of the symbiote, it ignores the opponent's will and forcibly controls the target's body. As long as the thread formed by the symbiote is still connected to the target, he can manipulate the target's body just like his own. Against a powerful target, this move may not be of much use, because the symbiote may not be able to possess the opponent. But to deal with weak targets, the Venom Puppet can play a good role. Not to mention anything else, just manipulating the opponent to make a meat shield is a good choice. Not to mention, the Venom Puppet possessed by the symbiote can also be used to lure enemies, sneak in, and attack. If the Venom Puppet has a good relationship with the enemy, it can even play a role in combating the enemy's mentality. After all, not everyone can kill their family, lover, and friends. The Venom Puppet's move is indeed not about martial arts at all. But in battle, not talking about martial arts is the only magic weapon for survival. Don't say it's just to play the enemy's mentality, if conditions permit, it doesn't matter even if the nuclear bomb is used as a weapon of mass destruction. In this regard, Russell particularly recognized the idea of Chen Hegao, the unrestricted fighting master who invented, Mad Dog Fist. If you can get a nuclear bomb, you will never use a cloud bomb, if you can use a gun, you will never need a knife. If the other party has agreed on a time and place for a decisive battle, then be prepared to hit the opponent with a dump truck. If it weren't for the fact that he was not proficient in criminal law, Russell, before the time of crossing, would have thought of going to Master Chen's school to study hard. Not for anything else, but to have a little bit of self-protection. While recalling Master Chen's wise words, in his mind, Russell controlled the three Ten Rings gang members to move forward. 50 meters, 100 meters, 120 meters, 150 meters. When the distance reached 150 meters, no matter how he controlled it, the three Ten Rings gang members did not take a step forward. 150 meters. It seems that this is the limit of the control distance he can currently achieve. Although this distance doesn't seem to be very long, Russell didn't pay too much attention to it. It would be good to have 150 meters. He has only acquired the ability of the Venom symbiote for a few days now, and it is already quite impressive to be able to do so. What's more, the symbiote will evolve little by little. From the perspective of human lifespan, it takes a little bit of time for the symbiote to evolve naturally. But if it is other methods, the evolution time will be greatly shortened. One of the most effective, and also the most common method used by the symbiote family, is to have children. The offspring of the symbiote will be stronger than the parent. Venom's son slaughter is stronger than venom, and slaughter's son poison is stronger than venom slaughter. Although the offspring born belong to another independent individual, this is also evolution. In addition to the traditional method of having children, there are some additional methods. For example, 
by fusing other powers to produce mutations, or constantly possessing themselves, they can increase their upper limit by replicating the power of the host. Antivenom is the representative of fusion with other forces to produce mutation. The ability to replicate the host has evolved, for example, possessing Deadpool to gain more powerful regeneration capabilities, and possessing Spider-Man to gain superpowers such as Spider-Sensing. Both of these methods can achieve the effect of enhancing the symbiote's own abilities. The only trouble is that both methods require a little luck. Having a baby is different. As long as the symbionts are willing, they can reproduce at any time, and one person will produce offspring. However, in most cases, symbiotes will not take the initiative to have children. The reason is very simple, because the symbiotes all have a father-killing plot. Killing one's own parents is basically the instinct of every symbiote. Slaughter wants to kill Venom. Toxin wants to kill Carnage and Venom. Let's not talk about whether it can be successful or not. If I don't commit father murder a few times, I'm embarrassed to say hello to other symbiotes. After testing the limit distance that the Venom puppet can now reach, Russell tested the current physical fitness of the 310 Rings gang members. Except that there is no way to control them to leave 150 meters away, other places are not bad. Attributes such as strength, speed, and stamina have been significantly strengthened, although the symbiote cannot strengthen them to the level of Russell himself, it is quite good. Even if they fight against the US team, who has reached the limit of the human body, they will not be too bad. If they only look at their physical fitness, they have a high probability of directly defeating Rogers. But if you add some messy things, such as 55% halo, vibranium shield, fighting skills, etc., they are more likely to lose to the US team. The battle is not something that can determine the outcome of the battle by comparing the data on the surface. It is not uncommon for people who have an advantage on the bright side to capsize in the gutter. Not to mention the unexpected situations in the battle that cannot be predicted in advance. But in any case, these 310 Rings gang members are now in the most powerful period in their lives. Coupled with the weapons in their hands, the three of them could kill the rest of the stronghold. It wasn't a big problem. The 310 Rings gang members walked in front, and Russell was about 100 meters behind them. It didn't take long for them to arrive at their stronghold in the valley. The people who went to attack Russell just now were only a part of the staff in the stronghold. The rest of them are now sitting in twos or threes or standing in various corners of the base, chatting with each other. The target is only one car, even if the car is full of people, it will not be much. And there were more than 20 members of the Ten Rings gang who went out to attack Russell just now. The gunshots stopped shortly after. Of course, these Ten Rings gang members in the stronghold will take it for granted that the guy of unknown origin has been killed. More than 20 people go out to deal with a car, no matter how you look at it, you will not lose. How many people can there be in one car? Not a truckload of bread people. The members of the Ten Rings gang outside the stronghold were the first to discover their returning companions. After seeing only three people returning, they showed puzzled expressions. Just when they were about to open their mouths to ask what happened, the three Ten Rings gang members who could not see any difference suddenly raised their guns. Da 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 da. Boom, boom. Bang 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 bang. The sound of gunshots and explosions suddenly sounded, instantly breaking the calm of the valley. The members of the Ten Rings gang in the stronghold hadn't reacted yet, and the members of the Ten Rings gang outside died in the bullet storm of the Gatling gun and the bombardment of the rocket launcher. The three Ten Rings gang members controlled by Russell showed extremely good fighting qualities. The possession of the symbiote allows them to have an extraordinary physique that they have never had and Russell's manipulation gave them the combat qualities of a Navy SEAL. Through the thread of the symbiote, Russell manipulated the three members of the Ten Rings gang and used various combat techniques copied from the Punisher. Although this is not as good as his own display, for those Ten Rings gang members who have not received special combat training, this is still a huge gap that is hard to resist. The contrast between the two is like an NBA team bullying a high school team. Russell, who has already determined Tony's whereabouts, has absolutely no intention of leaving the Ten Rings gang members alive. Under his control, the three members of the Ten Rings gang possessed by the symbiote were like death gods, frantically harvesting the lives of their companions. 
The battle ended quickly. In less than five minutes, the members of the Ten Rings gang in the stronghold lined up to go to report to Mephisto. After dealing with these guys, Russell forcibly stopped the heartbeat of the three Ten Rings gang members through the symbiotic thread, and gave them the same decent way of death as the Punisher. The first battle of the Venom Puppet was better than he imagined. Until the end of the battle, none of the Ten Rings gang members in the stronghold discovered his existence. Maybe some Ten Rings gang members have discovered the three symbiont threads thinner than a baby's finger, but they didn't have a chance to figure out what was going on, and died in the hands of the Venom Puppet. Although he died at the hands of his own comrades, he was a little embarrassed. But compared with Russell's own shot, this is already a good result. If Russell cast Venom to join the battle, they would die even more miserably. After the members of the Ten Rings gang in the stronghold were served in one pot, Russell came to the pickup truck that was left on purpose. When controlling the Venom puppet to fight, he tried his best to avoid the battle from affecting this pickup. Although this pickup looks a little old and broken, it looks like a war-damaged Iraqi. But this is the only means of transportation in the stronghold. Unlike the stronghold where Tony was imprisoned, this stronghold is just an ordinary stronghold. The stronghold where Tony was imprisoned contained a large number of Stark Industries weapons. And here, there are not many good guns, let alone the heavy firepower of missiles. Russell boarded the pickup that appeared to be Iraqi war damaged, and used the keyless start technique he learned as a killer to start the pickup, which he didn't know how long it would last. The cave where Tony was imprisoned. As soon as the temporary studio was set up, Tony asked the Ten Rings gang members outside to send 12 small missiles produced by Stark Industries. After some fiddling, he easily dismantled this small, expensive missile, and took out a small object with pliers. What is this? Ethan asked curiously. Palladium metal, 0.15 grams. We need a total of 1.6 grams, so you have to dismantle the remaining 11 missiles. Tony looked at the metal palladium in front of him and said slowly. Although Tony answered his own question, Ethan still didn't know what he wanted to do. The only thing that is gratifying is that Tony's desire to survive is now completely up. In another cave, what is he doing? Raza, the little leader of the Ten Rings gang, said to his companion who was watching the surveillance screen. Working, the Ten Rings gang members who were watching the surveillance screen quickly replied. Raza, with dark skin and a shiny head, did not speak any more, and stared at the bonfire in front of him without saying a word. Asking Tony to help him build the Jericho missile was not in his plan. His initial plan, or the agreement between him and Obadiah, was to kill Tony, not kidnap Tony. Obadiah is responsible for providing information on Tony's whereabouts, and he is responsible for the attack. After that, Obadiah will not only give them a satisfactory payment, but also meet all their purchasing needs. Although Tony is protected by the U.S. military, it is not difficult to kill Tony under the protection of the U.S. military as long as he plans properly. If all goes according to plan, Obadiah is now the new owner of Stark Industries. However, the plans have not kept pace with the changes. Or rather, Obadiah should not have timed the attack when Tony returned to the U.S. base. After seeing the power of the Jericho missile, Raza changed his mind. The power of the Jericho missile is amazing. Yes, after killing Tony, he can indeed buy Jericho missiles from Obadiah. But paying money to buy it from someone else is not as good as someone helping you make it for free. Not to mention, during the manufacturing process, he can also obtain all the relevant information for the manufacture of the Jericho missile. So, Raza violated the agreement a little, and instead of killing Tony immediately, he tied him back. The people are tied back, and Tony is also making Jericho missiles very calmly now. But for some reason, Raza always felt something was wrong. What exactly went wrong, he can't say now. Just when he was thinking about how to deal with the dissatisfaction on Obadiah's side, a member of the Ten Rings gang suddenly came to him. Head, we can't contact Rahimi and the others now. Can't get in touch. What do you mean? Raza looked up at the Ten Rings gang member and said with a frown. We called them, but no one responded. Continue to call, and if there is still no response, send a few people over to take a look. By the way, call other strongholds and let them all be careful. The US military is now looking for Tony Stark everywhere, so they don't wander around when they have nothing to do. Raza quickly made arrangements. 
Okay, head. After his subordinates left the cave, Raza raised his head and looked at the surveillance screen with a solemn expression. At this time, Tony had no idea what was going on outside, and was dismantling missiles with Ethan in full swing, extracting the palladium metal he needed. On the other side of the mountain, Russell was driving wildly in a pickup truck damaged by Iraqi battles. Although everyone in the stronghold was killed by himself, Russell knew that this could only delay the time that the Ten Rings gang knew. When they can't get in touch with the stronghold, they must be suspicious. Although they are unlikely to know that he did this, and will blame the US military for this, but for the sake of safety, they are likely to run with Tony overnight. Russell doesn't plan to stay in Afghanistan too long. If he can solve the matter that day, he won't delay it until the next day. Not to mention, New York still has a soft and fragrant Diana waiting for him to come home. The distance between the two strongholds is not very far. Russell is confident that he will reach his destination within an hour if he drives an off-road vehicle like he did before. But now, this pickup truck, which looks like a war-damaged Iraqi, has severely limited his performance. He was originally dissatisfied with the off-road vehicle prepared by the Afghan Continental Hotel. But now, he felt that he was blaming the staff of the Continental Hotel wrong. In Afghanistan, the off-road vehicle he drove just now is the boutique vehicle here. If the off-road vehicle that made him complain a moment ago could score 60 points, then this pickup truck can't even score 40 points. In order to improve the driving experience, he had to pour out some symbiotes from his body and use the symbiotes to transform the seat. The driving experience can be improved through the morphological changes of the symbiote. But the performance of the vehicle, there is no way. This extremely bad driving experience made him look forward to the reward of endosymbiotic armor. If he owns the endosymbiotic armor, now, he doesn't need to experience such a bad driving experience that people just want to swear. Although he has loved the pickup as much as possible, he has not forced it to the limit. But after 40 to 50 minutes of hurricane, the pickup still ushered in the end of its life. All I heard was a bang, and the pickup truck exploded. Only the last 10 kilometers left. After scolding, Russell opened the door and got out of the car. Glancing at the map and GPS locator, he threw away most of his equipment and traveled lightly. Two pistols, a dagger, four magazines, a satellite phone, a GPS locator. Apart from these things, everything else was thrown by him. The pickup truck exploded, and he didn't need to think about going down the mountain road to the stronghold where Tony was imprisoned. Venom form. Just a few steps out, he cast the venom form, becoming nearly three meters tall and full of fangs. Between two points, the straight line is the shortest. After casting Venom Form, he charged straight towards the stronghold where Tony was imprisoned. In the cave remodeled studio, Tony and Ethan kept dismantling missiles. Outside the cave, Raza, the leader, was patrolling the valley. There is a stronghold outside that has completely lost contact. In the past hour, Raza's men have confirmed this. Although he had already sent his men to the lost stronghold, the unease in his heart not only did not weaken, but instead became more obvious. Did the news leak? This thought flashed through Laza's mind unconsciously. But soon, he dismissed this guess. Except for him and his subordinates, only Obadiah knew about Tony in his hands. He has great confidence in his subordinates. It is also impossible for Obadiah to leak this matter. As for the U.S. military, he does not think that the intelligence personnel of the U.S. military will have such great capabilities. After so many years of dealings, he is very clear about the strength of the U.S. military in Afghanistan. If U.S. intelligence personnel could even find out about this kind of thing, then the U.S. military would have eliminated the terrorists hiding in the mountains long ago. The mountainous terrain of Afghanistan is a very important reason why the U.S. military, whose equipment and combat literacy are far superior to terrorists, has not been able to catch them all at once. There is no way to conduct large-scale military mobilization, resulting in the U.S. military being unable to give full play to its superiority in firepower. A small-scale army can't fight the terrorists hiding in the mountains very well. As long as these terrorists find a cave to hide in, it will be like disappearing. Raza was thinking about which link went wrong. On one of the tops of the valley, Russell in the form of Venom was looking down upon the situation in the valley. Although it was a bit far away, 
he could clearly see the stark industrial weapons placed in the military camouflage tent. He could even see the words, made by Stark Industries, on the box. Unpacked, unpacked, individual rocket launchers, various types of small missiles. Although the members of the Ten Rings gang in the valley are a bit sloppy, it has to be said that the heavy firepower they obtained is still very high-end. There are about 30 or 40 members of the Ten Rings gang that I can see now. If it is added that they did not come out of the cave, the total number may reach 70 or 80. At the entrance of the valley, a heavy machine gun is erected. The members of the Ten Rings gang gathered in twos and threes all over the valley. Some sat and chatted together, and some looked around. Not many people, no problem. Observing the environment in the valley, Russell controlled the black tentacles and took out the only two pistols on him. Let's start. Hunting time. Russell did not hesitate, suddenly forced his legs and jumped down from the top of the mountain, like a black meteor falling towards the valley. Before he landed, the huge shadow on the ground caught the attention of the members of the Ten Rings gang. Just as they looked up at the sky, Russell, who was still falling, controlled the black tentacles and pulled the trigger. Spear throwing. Boom, boom boom, boom, bullets flew out with lightning and flew towards the members of the Ten Rings gang in the valley. Some of these bullets follow the normal flight path and fly straight to the target. What's more, it drew an unreasonable arc in the air and flew towards the members of the Ten Rings gang who were hiding behind the cover. Bang, almost at the same time as the bullet flew out, the demonic Russell landed in the middle of the valley, and a superhero-like landing on one knee came. With the strengthening of the Venom symbiote, his knees don't hurt at all. In fact, even without the strengthening of the symbiote, his knees wouldn't hurt. This height is not enough for him to bear. At the same time as he landed, the black tentacles did not stop pulling the trigger, and the gunshots continued to sound. While manipulating the black tentacles to fire, he let new black tentacles pour out of his body, and flew towards the individual bazooka and other weapons in the camouflage tent. These members of the Ten Rings gang never thought that on an ordinary afternoon, a black monster would fall from the sky. What they didn't expect was that the black monster attacked violently as soon as it appeared. Before they could raise their weapons to fight back, more than a dozen companions were killed by Russell's gun. Although he only had two pistols and a dagger on his body, this was not a problem at all. No guns, no cannons, the enemy will make them for us. Although the people of the Ten Rings gang don't know how to make weapons, it doesn't matter, there is an arsenal in front of them. The magazine of the pistol was quickly emptied. One after another, members of the Ten Rings gang died under Russell's gun. The black tentacles wrapped around the pistol began to quickly change the magazine. At the same time, the newly emerging black tentacles picked up the individual bazooka in the tent. Until now, the members of the Ten Rings gang in the valley have not figured out why a black monster descended from the sky and started slaughtering them without saying a word. They were caught off guard by Russell and lost more than 20 companions in the blink of an eye. When the black tentacles changed the magazines and controlled the individual bazooka, the members of the Ten Rings gang finally launched a counterattack. Da 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 da. All kinds of rifles fired. The heavy machine gun at the entrance of the valley also aimed at the monster-like Russell, venting wildly. Bullets came from all directions like a torrential rain, hitting Russell. Such fierce firepower is enough to mash an elephant or a rhino into flesh. However, after the menacing bullet hit Russell's body, it was deflected. How is this possible? Seeing the scene in front of them, the hairless leader Raza and the other Ten Rings gang members showed incredible expressions. Fuss. Seeing the shock and disbelief on their faces, Russell sneered in his heart. When Raza and the others looked at him in shock, he manipulated the black tentacles to quickly change the magazine, and aimed the bazooka at the heavy machine gun in the distance. Bang 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 bang. After changing the magazines, Russell did not hesitate, and once again used the spear-throwing technique, frantically harvesting the lives of the members of the Ten Rings gang. While performing the spear-throwing technique, he did not forget to control the black tentacles to launch rockets. Boom, the rocket with an orange-red tail flame precisely hit the heavy machine gun in the distance and exploded. The huge explosion not only resounded throughout the valley, but also spread into the cave. What happened outside? Tony raised his head and looked at Ethan. The US military is here to save you. They are here to save you.
Ethan said loudly with excitement on his face. At this time, Ethan was so excited that he almost didn't dance. But Tony frowned. Not right. This is not the combat style of the U.S. military. Stark Industries is the most important weapons supplier to the U.S. military, and Tony knows very well what kind of combat style the U.S. military has. If it is a large-scale military operation, the U.S. military really likes to engage in some big scenes. For example, missile scrubbing or indiscriminate fire coverage strikes, etc. But now it's not a large-scale military operation. According to the U.S. military's combat style, for hostage rescue missions, they prefer to send elite teams, such as SEALs, to carry out scalpel-style precise rescues. When the hostages are successfully rescued, the U.S. military will be able to provide various heavy firepower cover during the subsequent retreat. However, now, it doesn't look like a heavy fire cover when retreating. The sound of explosions and gunshots continued outside the cave. Tony and Ethan could even hear Ten Rings members shouting in the corridor. Time passed little by little. The sound of explosions and gunfire outside the cave gradually ceased. Tony and Ethan looked at each other, and they picked up the wrench on the workbench tacitly. At this moment, there were several hurried voices from outside the iron gate of the cave. Only a bang was heard, and the closed iron door was pushed open. Raza, whose head was bleeding, rushed in with the few remaining men, raised the rifle in his hand, and snatched the wrench from their hands. Then, aim the muzzle at their heads, stand behind them, and use them as human shields. Before Tony and Ethan could figure out what happened, a huge black monster slammed open the iron door and appeared in their sight. Although there are more members of the Ten Rings gang here than in the previous base. But for Russell, it made no difference. Without much effort, he took their lives away. Raza and the others, who now regard Tony as human shields, are the only members of the Ten Rings gang left in the stronghold. Put down the gun. If you don't want him to die, put down the gun immediately. As the leader, Raza had completely lost the calmness that the leader should have, and shouted to Russell. Perhaps to prove his determination, he also used his rifle to slam Tony's head into the head, as if Russell didn't put down his gun, and he immediately let Tony's head fire. Shoot, shoot Tony Stark. If the gun in your hand has no bullets, I'll give you one. Russell controlled the black tentacles and threw the rifle with the grenade launcher that he had just picked up in front of Raza. What? Neither Raza nor Tony thought that Russell would give such an answer. What's the matter? Don't you dare to shoot. You don't even have the guts to be a terrorist. You should go back to farming. It seemed that Raza, Tony and others were not shocked enough, Russell continued. Raza never thought that Russell didn't care about Tony's life at all, didn't he come to save Tony Stark? Isn't he the superpower sent by the U.S. military to find Stark? He really didn't care about Stark's life or death. Raza's thoughts started to get a little confused. Not right. He said that on purpose. He is testing me. Of course, it wouldn't be too stupid for Raza to be the leader of the local Ten Rings gang. He quickly figured out Russell's true intentions. Or, he thought he had seen through Russell's intentions. After seeing the change in Raza's expression, Russell knew that this guy must be thinking too much. Under the watchful eyes of Raza, Tony and others, he manipulated the black tentacles and raised the pistol. Since you don't dare to shoot, then I'll do it. What? Raza, Tony and the others widened their eyes again. Before they could speak, Russell manipulated the black tentacles to cast a spear-throwing technique. Boom, 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 two pistols, two shots each. The fired bullets drew different arcs in the air bypassing Tony and Ethan, who were used as human shields, and hitting Raza and the other's eyes or temples a little bit back with incomparable precision. Hit the heart, and the target will have an 8-second subconscious response. Punching, to be precise, is the nerve response center 2 inches behind the eyeball. Once hit the nerve response center, the target doesn't even have the chance to react subconsciously, so he will go to report to Mephisto. Russell is very confident in his marksmanship especially after getting the unreasonable magic shot of the spear-throwing technique. The bodies of Raza and the others fell to the ground. Tony and Ethan were completely stunned. From his appearance to the present, Russell's actions have been more unexpected every time. At first, he ignored the threat, and even bewitched the Ten Rings gang to kill Tony. Then he further stimulated the Ten Rings gang, for fear that they would not shoot. 
In the end, unexpectedly, he directly killed the Ten Rings gang. Is this guy crazy? Wasn't he afraid that the Ten Rings gang would really shoot me? Tony looked at Russell viciously, as if he was going to eat him. Don't look at me like that, I'm not a good person either. If you continue to look at me like this, maybe I will accomplish what they should have accomplished. Russell pointed to the bodies of Raza and the others. Then, he released the venom form in front of Tony and Ethan, and took the pistol controlled by the black tentacles in his hand, revealing his true appearance. After hearing Russell's threat, although Tony was even more dissatisfied, he still restrained his angry eyes when he was already eager to survive. Sit down, Russell pointed at Tony and Ethan at gunpoint. Who exactly are you? After sitting down, Tony immediately asked. My name is Russell Bradley, a private investigator and killer living in New York. Russell said with a smile. Tony didn't expect that Russell would actually answer this question, and also revealed his real name and occupation. Private detectives and killers. Then are you a detective or a killer now? After thinking for a few seconds, Tony continued to ask. Whether I'm a detective or a killer depends on whether you can get out of here alive. If you can get out alive, then I'm a private detective. When you die, I am the killer. Although Tony is a genius, he still can't keep up with Russell's ideas at this time. Judging from his appearance, Russell was a handsome young man in his early 20s who looked harmless to humans and animals. But it was this young man who single-handedly broke into the stronghold of the Ten Rings gang, and under their noses, he killed the terrorists who took them hostage without changing his face. You want money, how much do you want, ask for a price, no matter how much you want, I can satisfy you. Tony said quickly, I do want money, after all, it cost me a lot of money and time to come all the way to Afghanistan. However, how much money it takes to let you go, let others decide. With Tony's net worth, he can indeed give an exciting reward. But Russell was a man of principle. What's the meaning? Tony didn't want to guess what Russell was thinking now, so he asked directly. You'll find out in a second. By the way, let me tell you some inside information. This time, the kidnapping was arranged by Obadiah. As for why, it should be easy for you to guess the reason. Russell took out the satellite phone while answering Tony. Under the watchful eyes of Tony and Ethan, he dialed a number. Beep, beep, beep. After dozens of seconds, the call was connected. Before waiting for the person on the other end of the phone to speak, Russell took the lead and said, Mr. Stanley, good afternoon. No, Afghanistan is 12 hours and 30 minutes faster than Los Angeles, so it should be late at night. If you don't mind, Mr. Stanley, you can go to the toilet later. Stanley on the other end of the phone thought it was a harassing call from nowhere. However, after hearing the word Afghanistan, he dismissed the idea of hanging up. Who are you? I don't know if it was because of being woken up in the middle of the night, or if I felt something, Obadiah's tone sounded gloomy. Russell pressed the speaker key to let Tony know that Obadiah, whom he regarded as a mentor and friend, was on the other end of the phone. Just when Tony was about to say something, Russell pointed the pistol at him and motioned him not to speak. It doesn't matter who I am, what matters is that Tony Stark is in my hands now. Mr. Stanley, since you planned the kidnapping, I believe you shouldn't mind spending money to kill Stark. Russell said slowly. I don't know what you are talking about. If you are the one who kidnapped Tony, and you want a ransom, I can give it to you, but you must ensure Tony's safety. Obadiah said righteously. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then you should contact the military. Stark Industries has a good relationship with the military, and you should be able to easily contact the commander of the U.S. military base in Afghanistan. By the way, Stark's good friend Colonel Rhodes is also in Afghanistan now. You can contact him, Russell said with a relaxed expression. Who are you and what do you want to do? Obadiah's tone became even colder. As I said, it doesn't matter who I am, what matters is how much you are willing to spend to kill Tony Stark. You can pay Shiji Gang a lot of money to buy a murderer, but you can't come to me, so you don't want to pay a penny, right? If you really don't want to pay a penny, that's fine. I believe Tony Stark wouldn't mind spending a lot of money to buy his life back. I'll give you 10 seconds to think about it, and I hope you can give a price that is acceptable to each other. 10, 9, 8, 7. Russell immediately started the countdown. 
Just when he was about to count down to the last second, Obadiah finally gave an answer. $300 million. I can give you $300 million. How do you want to receive it? Transfer, cashier's check, bearer bond, or equivalent? Tony had his last fantasies about Obadiah. But now, this last shred of illusion has also been shattered. Glancing at Tony, Russell said slowly, transfer the money. After speaking, he gave Obadiah an overseas bank account that was never used, not even in his own name. As a killer, you need to know where to get the guy to eat, and also know how to deal with your own reward. The U.S. tax department is no joke. This is a magical department that dares to collect taxes from drug dealers, and has its own armed organization, prison cells, and courts. In this world, only death and paying taxes are eternal. This sentence was born because of the U.S. tax department. I need a little time to deal with it, Obadiah said slowly. Can, after speaking, Russell hung up the phone and threw the phone to Tony. This guy has a quirk of not taking things from other hands. So he chose to throw the phone to Tony instead of handing it over. Obadiah is willing to spend 300 million US dollars to buy your life, then you should not mind buying your own life back with 600 million US dollars. Although 600 million US dollars is a bit much, it is for others. For Tony, his life is far from being measured by 600 million dollars. You want me to transfer the money to your account? Tony asked. No, the phone is for you to ask for help. You know my real name and occupation. I'm waiting for you and your $600 million in New York. Russell stood up and said with a smile. Aren't you afraid that I won't give it? Looking at Russell standing up, Tony suddenly asked. $600 million is not a big number for you. Besides, if you don't give it, I'll ask you for it in person. You wouldn't want to see me in that situation. After speaking, Russell turned around and left. Just as he was about to leave the cave, Tony stood up and asked him loudly, where's Obadiah? You take his money, so you don't do anything. After hearing Tony's words, Russell helplessly shook his head and said without looking back, he won't transfer money. What he needs time to deal with is not to transfer money, but to find someone to kill you and me. If you don't want to die here, you'd better contact your good friend Colonel Rhodes as soon as possible. Speaking of which, Russell suddenly remembered something and threw the GPS locator on him to Tony. Wish you guys good luck. After speaking, he ignored Tony and Ethan and left the valley. With a satellite phone and a GPS locator, if Tony can't find Colonel Lord to rescue him, then there's no need for him to leave Afghanistan. Tony is now rescued, but Russell couldn't get the reward of endosymbiotic battle armor for a while. Activation condition. Stop Tony Stark from becoming Iron Man due to kidnapping. He has only rescued Tony now, and has not completely met the activation conditions for the endosymbiotic armor. Although I haven't received this reward yet, if nothing else, when Tony returns to Los Angeles alive, the endosymbiotic armor should almost be available. In the cave, he saw those small missiles that were dismantled by Tony and Ethan. And Tony's chest is still the electromagnet connected to the car battery, not the small arc reactor. Tony now has a concrete plan for making a small arc reactor. For the sake of safety and convenience, he will definitely replace the energy in his chest with a small arc reactor. But with the small arc reactor, it doesn't mean that Tony will become Iron Man. Tony doesn't need to make the Mark I to save himself now. Even if he returns to Los Angeles to continue making the Mark I, the Mark I will not fall into Obadiah's hands. Without the Mark I, the engineers at Stark Industries would not have been able to make a fully upgraded Iron Master of the Mark I. Without Iron Overlord, Iron Man's battle to fame would of course not occur. 11 p.m. Russell returned to the Continental Hotel in Kabul. Not long after he left the Ten Rings Gang's stronghold, he met a group of enthusiastic citizens. After some, friendly, communication, these, enthusiastic citizens, with weapons gave him the only means of transportation, a jeep over ten years old. When he returned to the hotel, the front desk of the hotel gave him a puzzled look. In the morning, he came out with a lot of weapons and supplies. In the end, he came back before a day had passed. Is this the trump card of New York hotels? The efficiency is really high. After returning to the hotel, Russell first booked a flight back to New York tomorrow, and then changed his mountain combat uniform. 
take a bath, eat, sleep. Early the next morning, he boarded the plane back to New York with his luggage. Coincidentally, this time, he met the flight attendant who handed him a small note last time. Last time, he simply ignored the small note handed over by the flight attendant because he was catching up on sleep. Now, he didn't need to make up his sleep, and he took a serious look at the blonde stewardess in front of him. The big place is big, the small place is small. The fat on the body is obedient and grows where it should grow. The legs wrapped in black silk appear to be long and straight, and they must feel very good to the touch. The body and appearance are all good, and the flight attendant uniform on her body also adds a lot of points. After looking at it unabashedly, he took the small note with a smile. Melissa, Russell glanced at the name and contact information on the small note. It seems that this long journey should not be too lonely. Twenty hours later, the plane landed at JFK International Airport. Before getting off the plane, Melissa gave Russell a second note. It's not the same as the one at the beginning. The small note that Melissa is handing now does not contain contact information, but an address. Russell still smiled and took the small note from Melissa. However, after getting off the plane, he threw the note into the trash can. Fast food is fast food. It is boring to eat home-cooked food. But then again, he didn't expect Melissa, who is tall and like a Victoria's Secret model, to be so flexible. In a small place like an airplane bathroom, she can still play so many tricks. Manhattan, Sky Apartments. After getting off the plane, Russell drove directly back to the apartment. It was not yet 12 noon, and Diana was working at the museum. After returning to the apartment, he changed his clothes, took a comfortable hot bath, and thoroughly cleaned up the traces left by Melissa. Diana knew that he would go out and fool around occasionally, but as long as he did not go too far, Diana would turn a blind eye. In Diana's words, this is the instinct of male creatures. She doesn't mind that Russell has such an instinct, but he can't do it too much. For example, bring a woman home, or let Diana see that he has traces left by other women. Thanks for the education of the feudal monarchs on Paradise Island. Thanks for the open and inclusive culture of America. After washing up, Russell came to the study, turned on the computer, and searched for Tony Stark news. When he went to Afghanistan, most of the news about Tony on the internet was Tony's tidbits. Now, however, it is the news that Tony was attacked and injured in Afghanistan, occupying the headlines of the major news media. Not kidnapping, but attacked and injured. The news that appeared on the internet only said that Tony was attacked by terrorists in Afghanistan and was injured, and there was no mention of kidnapping at all. In these news, it is also full of the content of a large number of U.S. troops fighting heroically and repelling terrorist attacks. The heroic U.S. military foiled the terrorist plot. Very good. Tony now knows the truth about his kidnapping, but Obadiah's name is not mentioned at all in the news. Obviously, Tony is going to deal with Obadiah secretly. After reading these untrue news reports, Russell closed the page and leaned back in his chair thinking about what to eat tonight. How Tony wants to deal with Obadiah is all Tony's business. As long as Tony doesn't break the bill, these things have nothing to do with him at all. Just as he was thinking about whether to have a cozy candlelight dinner with Diana at home tonight, or go out for a romantic date, his phone rang. Glancing at the name displayed on the phone screen, he frowned slightly. It's Winston again. After pressing the on button, Winston's voice came over. How are things in Afghanistan going? Okay, Russell replied with a bored expression. Since that's the case, do you want to think about that entrustment last time? Winston didn't talk nonsense and asked straight to the point. As I said, I'm not interested. Fifty million dollars. I'm not the only killer in the hotel, let the customers entrust others. At this price, many people should be interested. Russell refused again. Fifty million dollars to kill a person is a high price without any suspense. At this price, let alone killing Daredevil, even if it were to kill Spider-Woman, many killers would be interested. Of course, if you are interested, you are interested, and whether you can complete the commission is another matter. This customer is not an ordinary customer. He is not only important to the hotel, but also has a certain influence on the high table. If you continue to refuse, maybe the entrustment will become an order directly. Wouldn't you want to see this situation? Winston continued. The order of the high table. 
Russell was stunned for a moment, then laughed. Ha ha ha, the order of the high table, Winston, do you really dare to say it? Hearing Russell's laughter, Winston knew that things were starting to go badly. Winston, I'm asking you a very serious question now. You'd better think it through before answering. Are you threatening me? Russell's tone became extremely cold. No, that's not what I meant. I mean, clients may go directly to the high table in order to let you take action. Since you are not interested in commissioning, I will recommend others to the client. Without any hesitation, Winston replied immediately. If you can do this, of course it's the best. I'm quite satisfied with the two years of cooperation. I hope to continue to cooperate as originally agreed, what do you think? Russell's tone was no longer cold, and he said slowly. Of course, as soon as you come back, I won't disturb your rest. After speaking, Winston hung up the phone. Russell frowned and put down his phone, all the good mood he had just returned home disappeared. He is now starting to think about whether to throw away his identity as a direct operated killer of the Continental Hotel. In the past, his identity as a direct operated killer of mainland hotels did bring him a lot of convenience. But right now, this identity brings more trouble than good. Two years ago, the reason why he chose to join the Continental Hotel, who had just made a name for himself in the killer world. Besides the Continental Hotel can provide him with a lot of help, there is another very important reason, and that is the promise given by Winston. According to outside rumors, he was recognized by the Continental Hotel because of his outstanding strength, and thus became the direct hitman of the Continental Hotel. But the truth is that Winston's commitment was the main reason why he joined the Continental Hotel. Winston promised him that as long as he was willing to join the hotel, he could not only use the power of the hotel to the greatest extent, but also maintain the freedom to the greatest extent. As long as he doesn't violate the hotel's rules in the open, he can enjoy all the rights of a hotel-operated killer. It would be even better if he was willing to carry out the hotel's internal commission at his convenience. The reason why Winston offered such conditions to attract him to join. Willing is easy, because he has extraordinary abilities. There are many killers in New York, and there are also many people with extraordinary abilities. But there are not many killers with extraordinary abilities. The Cross and Mr. X in the Brotherhood are barely considered killers with extraordinary abilities. But compared with Russell's simple and rude extraordinary physique, the two abilities of spear-throwing and adrenaline autonomous control seem a little mediocre. Winston wooed Russell to join the Continental Hotel, ostensibly to enhance the hotel's strength. But Russell knew that the reason Winston offered those conditions to win him over was mainly for himself. Winston is now the manager of the Continental Hotel in New York, which is already a high-profile position in the killer world. But people are ambitious. The mere position of a New York Continental Hotel manager could not satisfy Winston's ambitions. He wanted a seat at the high table. If conventional methods are used, even if Winston retires, he will not even think about getting a seat at the high table. Therefore, Winston can only consider using some unconventional means. Russell, the unconventional method he chose. Russell didn't know exactly how he would do it. But if nothing else, Winston will definitely make a fuss about his strength and identity. Although he knew that Winston was working on some small calculations, Russell didn't say anything about it. Just like what he said just now, he is quite satisfied with the cooperation in the past two years. As long as Winston doesn't do too much, he doesn't mind Winston's use of internal commissions to entrust him to kill some people. Other direct-run killers may honestly carry out the hotel's internal commissions and orders from the high table, but Russell has no such idea at all. Whether it is the hotel's internal entrustment or the order from the high table. If he is interested, he will do these things. If he is not interested, even if the judge from the high table comes over in person, he will not accept it. If it's a big deal, just shoot it twice, it's no big deal. The high table and the Continental Hotel seem to be very powerful, but if you really want to deal with them, it is not that difficult. Don't talk about him, even his former colleague who loved his dog who had gone home and got married would have a way to make the high table and the Continental Hotel look like shit. His former dog-loving colleague who is just a normal human can do it, and of course he has no problem. After some serious thinking, he decided to temporarily retain the identity of the hotel's direct operated killer. Although he now has his own personal channels and relationship network, 
compared with the hotel, it is still a lot worse. Since Winston has not turned his back on his face, it is not impossible to continue the cooperation. After making the decision, he searched the internet for the latest reports on Daredevil. He is now a little curious, what exactly did Daredevil do, and led Jin to not entrust him to kill Daredevil. Compared with Tony's news, Daredevil's news is obviously much less. Except for the citizens of New York, people in other places basically have no interest in Daredevil. Popularity determines the quantity and timeliness of news reports. As a superhero who basically only appears at night and is active in Hell's Kitchen, Daredevil's latest report is from a week ago. Similar to the previous news, the latest news about Daredevil is that he attacked a certain gangster and rescued a group of women who were abducted and trafficked. The news is short, there is nothing particularly noteworthy about the whole case. Russell looked forward to other Daredevil reports, and still found no problems. They were all very common reports of superheroes fighting crime. It's not right, Daredevil's fight against evil in Hell's Kitchen is not a matter of a day or two. Jin did not want to kill Daredevil once or twice. There have been many requests to kill Daredevil before. But the remuneration for those commissions is not high, basically it is hundreds of thousands of dollars or one or two million dollars. If Daredevil hadn't completely annoyed Jin Bing, Jin definitely wouldn't have given him a high reward of 50 million dollars. There was nothing wrong with the news on the internet, so Russell logged onto the underground forum on the dark web and searched for Daredevil's information. After searching for information about Daredevil in the underground forums of the dark web, Russell finally understood why Kim had to entrust him to kill Daredevil. Daredevil broke into King's office in Fisk's mansion, killed all the bodyguards around him, and seriously injured Kim. Forehead, no wonder Kim didn't want to kill Daredevil so much. The dignified underworld emperor was beaten into his lair, and he was severely injured. If Jin Bing didn't do anything like this, then he, the underworld emperor, would be too useless. Looking at the post in the forum that had been replied to thousands of floors, Russell observed a few seconds of silence for Kim. In the American underworld, Jin is definitely the king of the underworld. Under normal circumstances, not many people dare to make fun of him. Because of a joke, it is not unbelievable that an underworld pursuit order is issued. Someone once hid behind the internet and abused Jin Bing. As a result, within a few days, this, heroic, guy performed a low-altitude skydive without a parachute at the Empire State Building. Although in normal times, people don't dare to take gold and make jokes. But it's different now. Whether it's a gangster who makes a fortune, or a social animal with a smug career, they all have a bad taste in watching big people eat their shit. Watching these high-ranking bigwigs get shriveled will make people feel that, big people are nothing more than this, resulting in a peculiar sense of pleasure of, others suffer, but oneself is happy. In addition to this reply to Chin Lu's post, Russell also saw a bounty in the forum. Daredevil's true identity, the reward is $10 million. Although this bounty was posted anonymously, you don't have to think about it to know that this bounty was definitely released. A reward of $10 million was offered, just to buy Daredevil's true identity. What is rich and powerful? This is it. After wandering around the forum for a while, Russell closed the page and quit the forum. Jin Ping and Daredevil's feud, he has no interest. Whether Jin Bing can successfully maintain his majesty as an underworld emperor, he doesn't care at all. However, he is a little curious now, when did Daredevil become so powerful that he was able to hit Jinbian in Fisk Tower? Jin is not an ordinary underworld boss, let alone the kind of boss who only arranges his subordinates to do dirty work. He is thoughtful and wiser than ordinary people. More than 90% of his body is made up of muscles, and his strength is unbelievable. Not only can he punch through a wall with his bare hands, but he is also the world's top martial artist. Like the Punisher, he has the highest level of human combat power. Although Daredevil is also a top fighter, he also possesses four extraordinary senses besides vision. But his frontal combat ability is not particularly strong. Against ordinary people, his strength is more than enough. But compared with Jin Bing, his strength is not even as good as Jin Bing. Although Jin does not have any extraordinary abilities, he is not an easy enemy to deal with. Otherwise, he would have already died at the hands of other gangsters or punishers. Although I don't know how Daredevil did it, one thing is certain, and that is that Jin and is now completely infuriated. 
Time is fleeting. Soon it will be night. Instead of waiting for Diana at home, Russell drove to the museum to pick up Diana from get off work. They settled for dinner tonight at a restaurant outside, and then went to the cinema to watch a Hollywood action blockbuster just released. After returning to the apartment, Bisheng was newly married. Clouds with flowery face, willow waist swaying. The hibiscus tent is warm, and the spring night is short. After returning from Afghanistan, Russell and Diana lived an unpretentious cohabitation life again. During the day, they go to work separately to enrich their lives. In the evening, they exchanged emotions and learned from each other. Time goes by day by day. Before I knew it, a week passed. Octopus Monster Private Detective Agency. Temporary Office. Russell was sitting in the office, playing the console game he just bought. This week, he neither went to the Continental Hotel to take orders, nor did he accept any detective commissions. Aside from playing games and accompanying Diana, the only thing he did this week was to go to Midtown High School and meet a high school student. This high school student is called Peter Parker. That's right, Peter Parker, who was supposed to be Spider-Man, but for some reason he hasn't been bitten by a spider until now. Spider-Woman has been out for four years. Peter Parker is still in high school. It's a chaotic world. Apart from not being bitten by spiders, Peter Parker in this world is not much different from Peter Parker in other universes. His parents died young and he was raised by his uncle and aunt. Excellent grades, excellent IQ, but not many friends. My uncle passed away unexpectedly last year, and now I live with my beautiful aunt in an ordinary apartment in Forest Hills, Queens. Russell went to Midtown High School to find Peter. In addition to seeing Peter's potential to become Spider-Man in the future, there was another very important reason. He saw Peter's wisdom. In the Marvel world where geniuses emerge endlessly, Peter is not the one with the highest IQ, but he is also a rare genius. In a certain parallel universe, Dr. Octopus, who inherited Peter's body, memory, and knowledge, combined the wisdom of the two to establish the famous Parker Industries. Although Parker Industries was established after the soul of Dr. Octopus occupied Peter's body, it cannot be denied that Peter's own knowledge and wisdom have given Dr. Octopus a lot of help. Although Russell couldn't get Dr. Octopus's soul to possess Peter, but he can make Peter and Dr. Octopus his subordinates and let them contribute to him together. The meeting with Peter was very simple. He just drove a Porsche to Midtown High School, and then told Peter that he had a well-paid internship, and he easily attracted Peter, who is still an ordinary person. Peter, who has become Spider-Man, is not easy to fool, but Peter, who is just an ordinary person and has no money, is not difficult to fool. So, Peter, who was only in his first year of high school, became an intern in the firm. 4 p.m. After school, Peter came to the office wearing casual casual clothes and carrying a backpack. Mr. Bradley, good afternoon. After coming to the office, Peter said to Russell. Good afternoon, Peter. Russell put down the gamepad and looked up at the tender and delicious Peter. In terms of appearance, Peter looks pretty good. But unfortunately, this guy has no confidence. Obviously, he can become a man of the school by virtue of his IQ, but he has turned himself into a nerd that most American female students don't like. But this can't be blamed on Peter, his life experience is indeed a bit miserable. His parents died young, his uncles and aunts are ordinary people, and they can't teach him much. In addition, the family environment is not good, and it is normal for teenagers who are in adolescence to become inferior. Mr. Bradley, is there anything I need to do today? Peter put down his backpack and asked again. Yes, your job today is to learn how to photograph. Russell pointed to the SLR camera and camera he had just bought on the table, and said slowly. I hope everyone will support it and subscribe more. 